How y'all doing, everyone? Happy Friday, and welcome to The WAN Show. We've got a great show lined up for you today. We'll be talking about... Okay, this is not a major topic, but it's pretty unusual and uh, comical. A woman was caught trying to smuggle CPUs into China under a fake pregnant belly. Like a, a lot of them. <laughs> we'll be talking about that. Intel Arc GPUs are getting a massive upgrade in performance, particularly in games that use older APIs. We're going to be talking about that. What else we got? And uh, uh, other... This, this one's a big topic. Why don't you care about this topic? Wait, You have one? no love for this topic at the Where top. The highlight. Oh, one. yeah. Nintendo DMCA's YouTube documentary about a dev's pitch for a 2004 Zelda game that didn't even get made. And and there's like reasons why this is really weird. Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that for sure. Um, and I don't want to talk about the Bill Clinton thing. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to continue conversations about GPT because you're stuck here with me no matter what, so I'm going to do it. All right? I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Captive audience. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like they could just go to a different tab nope. in their browser. Illegal. The show is brought to you today by Vessi Footwear, Brilliant, and Newegg. I think the first one has got to be the CPU smuggling story. Okay. The, the, the pictures are just wild here, all right? Uh, this was so random. I, was, I, was, I jumped onto the forum uh, to check out the tech news section, as I do sometimes, to see if we can find anything more for WAN, and I came across this. Posted by Big Stroons. Thanks, Big Stroons. Tries to enter China with over over 200 Intel Alder Lake CPUs hidden inside fake pregnant belly. <laughs> this wasn't like a couple. That's so many. Okay, these are Alder Lake CPUs. So these are high-end chips. We yeah. are talking somewhere in the neighborhood of, hold on a second, calculator, uh, 200 times. Uh, let's say they're not even top tier chips, like maybe like 400 bucks or something like that. We're talking like with the iPhones, nearly a hundred grand worth of merchandise under this under this wow. fake baby bump. And apparently the way that they caught her was that she claimed to be five months pregnant, but obviously Someone well informed. Yeah, obviously had neither uh, ever actually been pregnant nor ever seen a five months pregnant person because her belly was absolutely huge. And she was apparently walking effortlessly, which caused a lot of suspicion. Interesting. Okay. So hmm. after careful inspection, the customs agents discovered she had used duct tape <laughs> to fix and hide smuggled goods beneath the fake silicone, be uh, silicone belly. Uh, so 202 Alder Lake CPUs and nine iPhones. <laughs> um, not a baby. Uh, the original source here. Wait, where's the uh, where's the so original this article? Is, this uh, is Open a three Ds at least one of the sources. So we've got that. The next paragraph goes in to say the yeah. strangeness about this situation, aside from the obvious, <laughs> is that customs would have eventually noticed the components and phones once Zhao walked through a metal detector. Do they have pregnant women walk through metal detectors? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, what the heck? Yeah. There's nothing about a metal detector that would cause. Ma'am, your your of... your your baby is metallic. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> How could she have possibly thought this was going to work? Um, I think that another really wow. uh, kind of key part of this conversation is what is the deal with sneaking CPUs into yeah. China? There are okay. Well, there are a couple. There are a couple of answers here. Um, Let's talk about the more traditional reason to, to, to smuggle electronics into a country. Uh, one of the things that I heard through the grapevine, allegedly, allegedly, was that the online site, which I don't believe exists anymore, or if it does, it's under completely new management. Like None of the people who would have been involved in this scheme would still be there anyway. Okay. Um, but allegedly, Tiger Direct... Okay, e-tailer that you guys probably remember from the days of, of Zip Zoom Fly 
M Wave. All right. Back in the day, I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. The the big four were New Egg, Tiger Direct, Zip Zoom Fly, and M Wave, like back in the early to mid 2000s. And allegedly, Tiger Direct, one of the ways that they were so successful was through taking taking advantage of uh Intel's MDF programs to a degree that just no one seemed to be able to figure out or care why they were doing so well. Okay, so they were based in Florida. As far as anyone outside could tell, they weren't really selling that much online. Newegg was based in California, and as far as anyone could tell, was selling a lot online. But Tiger Direct always seemed to sell a lot of Intel CPUs. And what was really unusual, so said the, the word through the grapevine, what was really unusual about it was that it was a really different skew mix from all the other major online sellers. Because typically, especially back then, high end would sell really well online. Like at NCIX, our best selling cards were like your 70 series, oh, really? 80 series cards, like for on the NVIDIA side, like your high end GPUs. Whereas someone like, I remember talking to my Zotac rap, rap, my Zotac rep way back in the day. And uh, he was saying, you know, oh yeah, you guys are like the biggest seller of, of high-end cards for us in the country. And I'm sitting here going, we sell almost nothing. How do you even have a job? And he was like, oh, well, we sell a ton of like tier cards, but it's all through like, like Best Buy or whatever else. And that's, that's pretty typical. That's why when you walk into a retail store, they don't have like $6,000 AVR like yeah. receivers on the shelf yeah. because the, just the density of customers who are going to buy that sort of thing is not high enough. They're not just walking into a store for that. It goes through installers like, like VARs, uh, value added resellers, or it goes through online, like online boutiques where if, yeah, if you're able to cover like half of a freaking country, you could manage to, you could afford to keep three or four of those in stock. You know what I mean? You can't just put them at 250 locations Yeah, and what, just one each? You're going to have at least two or it's not really in stock, is it? So it, it was typical for online sellers to sell a lot of enthusiast tier hardware and for retail sellers to sell a lot of low end. Now, Tiger Direct had retail stores, but so much of their sales it's like Celerons, Pentiums, like low-end stuff. And what I heard was that the reason for that is that anytime they needed to hit an MDF target or uh, you know, uh, pump up their, their, their volumes through Intel so that they could get uh, marketing funding, is they were buying like literal containers of CPUs. And then they were going on to container ships down to Brazil. Okay, so... Bit of a different operation, but same idea. Different operation, same idea. And the reason for that is that Brazil has absolutely, like, I don't know how to say this without using cuss words. Isn't or it just crazy import? Just unbelievable import tariffs yeah, I've heard about on this. electronics. Yeah. If you see a Brazilian, like an actual Brazilian who lives and works in Brazil holding an iPhone, they are a baller because everything all electronics just have these wild import tariffs and it's so it's so frustrating because you look at it and you go why yeah like I, okay sure you want revenue for your like government or whatever like but maybe how about something more reasonable and then people could actually afford any of this stuff and import volumes would go up and like probably it's a net gain all around and then you have better technology in the country and that's good for entrepreneurs like there's there's obvious reasons for for you know uh less friction when it comes to international trade particularly around electronics but i uh, I, I don't know anyway the point is the the smuggling uh, operation that allegedly was taking place uh, out of Florida was at least understandable because if you could get those CPUs into the country, even though you were going to have to find people who were going to like, you know, buy them like cash price under the table or whatever else, the difference in cost between a smuggled one and a, an officially imported one 
It's it's like double or something like that. A Prime is saying that it's apparently been to promote uh, in country manufacturing. Yeah, but that's not going to happen. It it as far as my understanding goes, it it didn't really work. I mean, they've been at this for how long now? It's <laughs> not happening. Long time. Yeah. Intel ain't putting a fab in Brazil. It's not. I remember really old school. Like I watched this really old school like mini doc on smuggling Xboxes into Brazil, <laughs> like original ones. Like this is this is a this is an old topic. Um, yeah, not a new thing. Anyway, but so someone someone brought up that this is maybe to get around um, some of the Trump introduced. Well, there's no single there's no single American administration to blame for this That's uh, at this enough. point. Yeah, yeah, but there are there are significant there. Uh, export restrictions yeah. on electronics into China. Yeah, and so if you simply whether it's a high import tariff that drives up pricing or whether it's a shortage that means you simply can't get them. I mean, we've seen around the world, never mind just in Brazil or just in China, we've seen around the world what people are willing to pay to get their gaming fix if there's a shortage of something like, say, for example, GPUs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this this $80,000 worth of CPUs, I don't know about the iPhones. That one I can't really figure out. Apple sells in, in China. Um, I, I don't know. There, there's other stuff that I really don't get. Like, it always kind of blows my mind when people will travel to Vancouver and like go shopping downtown at like Fendi or Gucci or whatever. I'm sitting here, but you don't have Gucci where you're from. Like, uh, may, maybe I'm totally off base here. Maybe it's just like a, like a, like a mindset thing when you're traveling, you're just like, yeah, I already spent $4,000 to be here. So what's another two grand on a bag? Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand the rationale. Appa behind apparently it. Apple yeah. is now assembling the iPhone 13 in Brazil, but not the iPhone 13 mini. Okay. So they they won one. They you know, won one. They got one. How's the how's the rest of it going? <laughs> just just ridiculous. Sweet. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I I just thought that was funny. Yeah. So so we've so we've seen what people will pay when there's a shortage. So it's possible that this eighty thousand dollars worth of CPUs is worth I don't know a hundred thousand, a hundred and fifty thousand. I mean, clearly there was money to be made if she was going to risk. I mean, jail time making an attempt like this. Can I help you? Sorry, I, I got it. We're fine. Um, yeah, no, it's... Um, and it, this has got to be like pretty much guaranteed jail, right? Trying to smuggle over 100 grand worth of something into a country? Yeah, I would, I would think so. The amount of money involved... I'm pretty sure that would throw you into jail here. I, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of money. Um, so I, 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 I don't know what kind of desperate situation she's in that she feels like she has to, to do this. Uh, but I hope for the best for everyone involved. And I think it's time for us to move on to our topic number two. Yeah. What do you want to talk about next? Intel Arc. There's All some right. stuff going on. Yeah. Arc let's GPUs talk about it. get DX9 support. Sort and of... Luke refuses to update his drivers. I do, actually. As am, part of the Arc Challenge. I am taking Let's a talk about that first. Then let's talk about how much better these drivers are. Okay. So we got an email from Intel. It was, it was not, I'm not complaining about the fact that I got an email. Just to be very clear, the person who sent it is a very nice person. Uh, it was worded nicely. There's no issues with the email. But we got an email telling us that there was this new driver. So I was like, okay, cool. Um, I clicked on the link, went to go download it. And then I was like, wait. I complained about Arc Control. Intel's overlay software thing. It's very annoying. It's it's extremely annoying. Do you don't you just love how when you turn on your computer, you just can't use it for a while until Arc Control decides to load, and then you can make it go away, and then you can use your control even your computer. Even Microsoft's own built-in notification pop-up things in the bottom, they sit over top of the expanded system tray. You cannot interact with anything in your yep. system tray. So if your computer's been to sleep for a while and it's like boom, 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 boom. I'm trying to use my computer. Nothing, nothing <laughs> should sit over top of me interacting with my PC. Anytime I am doing something like I run into this with um, like text, text input, for example, if I am typing right now you do not 
put a window, a focus window in front of me with a, with a highlighted OK button, for example, in the event that I maybe press spacebar or enter, either of which will activate it and have no idea what just happened. Yeah. That may not happen, and yet it does. Sorry, I. Yeah. that's an aside. No, Carry that's on, completely please. fine and very valid. Uh, but yeah, okay. So I, I left the email. I went to Art Control, went to go check if I could get an update. It's, I, I also wanted to make sure that it didn't like automatically update without me being at my computer or something. So Art Control does display in the top corner what version of the driver you currently have. Okay, I'm still on the old one. Cool. First one, check. Um, then I go to the driver page on Art Control. This yeah. page has not changed at all. There's still a, a the big banner. I, I complained about this in the video. There's no like update button that you would expect from a piece of software like this that updates your driver for you which is like the entire reason why most people would install these types of pieces of software, because that's the main value add that they have. Um, but that button doesn't exist. There is a banner image um, that says like download here thing, and it talks about Warzone 2.0 in the banner image. So I clicked on that being like, maybe they forgot to update this picture because that is the same picture that has been there since I installed my card. Um, I click on that. It brings me to an article about the Warzone 2.0 driver update thing that they had, which is the same page that was there when I first installed my card. So I'm like, okay, so they haven't updated anything. I must have gotten like an early email notification. That's not 100% fair to a user experience. So I don't really want to update right now. But just out of curiosity, I clicked the download now or whatever it was called yeah. button. Uh, and it brought me to the correct download page. So so that link was working. Uh, it brought me to the new driver. But I was like, there would have been no reason for me to click this. Because nothing led me to think that there was a new driver until I clicked this button. So I would not have done that if I didn't receive the email. So I exited out, informed them of uh, all that kind of stuff. A few different web like review sites, written sites, wrote articles on it. So maybe if you were quite the techie and followed a few review sites, you would have seen yeah. it that way and been able to update. That almost justified it for me, but I was like, I still haven't been told uh, by user, by Intel as a normal user, that this thing exists. So if I just followed tech to get my parts list yeah. and then built my computer and then ignored it, which is pretty normal. That's very normal. We see a lot of that. There's a ton of that. That's what I used to do. Yep. Um, I would not know that this driver update just happened. 100%. There's no way that I would have known. Um, they they told me that I would be getting a notification for it. Maybe I did. I loathe the, <laughs> the, uh, the ARC notifications. So I purposefully ignore them as much as possible because it makes me really mad. Um, <laughs> so maybe I got one. Maybe I got one while I wasn't at my computer. Yeah. Like just sending one notification is not good or acceptable a way that i've seen some things do it before is your tray icon updates with a little like mm -hmm. exclamation mark or a yeah. dot or something like some that's type of a better indication way to of like it. there's something here yeah. and then when you click on that the it should tell you when the screen comes up like hey there's a new driver yeah, update. because a driver update is basically the only thing that i want to hear from you yes about if you are a graphics card yes. manufacturer nothing else matters to me not at all no. And you can pack some other stuff in when you send me to your driver update. Sure. You can have some yeah. billboards along the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. While I'm, while I'm installing the driver, yeah. you can tell me about some game bundle you're running. But like, sure. realistically, if I'm installing your software and you are a first generation company, right? So this is Intel's first generation of GPU. If I own your product, there's nothing to upsell me to. I already own it. You don't have to market to me. Like with NVIDIA, I kind of get it. You install their drivers and it's like, the new RTX blah, blah, blah has blah, 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 or whatever. And it's like, yeah, sure, fine, fair enough. <laughs> but with Intel, I already have your one fucking card. <laughs> so unless you're making it better, I'm not interested. Like, yeah. or, or you know, they'll have, or like, uh, we have a game bundle now, buy a whatever and get a whatever. I don't care. What, I'm going to go buy a second? No, I'm going to go buy the game. I even thought this was kind of funny. Uh, if, you, if you have the ARC control software, there's a giveaway that they were doing where you win a computer with an ARC in it. I'm like, I have, I have, I have one of those. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
<laughs> it's like being at Disneyland, and they let the prize is a ticket to Disneyland. Do you want a ticket to Disneyland that you have to use today? Yeah, it's like, I mean, to be clear, I, sure, I'll go stand outside Disneyland and scalp it, like, I guess, but you <laughs> might as well just give me the cash at that point. Yeah, like you're giving me another ARC card that I can sell. It would have even made more sense yeah. to me if it was a system without a GPU. <laughs> And they were like, hey, yeah. you get to upgrade the rest of your rig now. Here's the latest rig to put around your arc. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like that would have made more, but it was like, nope. The main selling feature was that it came with an arc. And I was like, I have one already, come on. But, I mean, I'm not going to dog on them for giving away free computers to people. Yeah, That's I mean, cool. it's a good it thing. It was just funny, that's all. But, okay, so yeah, I still have not updated to this new driver, despite... Knowing that it's apparently actually super awesome, and we'll get into that in a second, yeah. but I'm kind of holding on to the stance of that I'm not going to do that until Arc Control, my arch nemesis, as far as I can tell at this point, is going to inform me in some reasonable way that there is actually an update, which it hasn't done so far, so I'm just going to keep trudging around on the, the old driver. Uh, LB725C in Floatplane Chat says, Luke, do you have Intel Support Assistant? Every I time I boot so. my PC, it tells me about the new Arc driver. I'm pretty sure I do. Arc but, Nemesis. But again, like, <laughs> Arc Nemesis, that's pretty good. Um, I don't, I, okay, first of all, the, the Arc control notifications yes. cover all other notifications. So if it's, it's informing true. me. It's true. When I turn on my computer that yeah. that's happening, um, What's the point in that? Also, I have learned that Arc Control just disables my whole computer while it's loading. So when it does that, I leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I leave my computer. I, and that's not me just being like, I'm going to ignore this notification. That's what I've been doing the whole time. Before I got this email, everything. Yeah. I, I wake up in the morning. I do work from home. So one of the first things I do is I turn my computer on. Uh, just so I can make sure, like, I don't know, it's going to boot because I need to be there for meetings or whatever else. So one of the first things I do is I turn my computer on and then I go, like, get breakfast. So what I've done since I installed Arc is I get my computer to the point where Arc Control is going to rip control of my own computer from my hands until it finishes loading. And I leave and I grab breakfast and I come back to my computer and then it's done booting up and I eat. Some people are calling Luke petty over this, but I actually disagree. Luke is trying to experience the product as he would experience it if he wasn't a member of the tech media. If I did not directly get emailed that message, which again, I'm not complaining about receiving the email. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying if I didn't receive that email. Thanks, Trout. Um, yep. <laughs> it's, it's good. Um, and it was well explained. It was well written. Like nothing went wrong there. My, yeah. my whole complaint is purely with art control. That, that he uh, wouldn't have known. So yeah. the idea is actually just to maintain the integrity of the challenge. Yeah. Which is that if he wasn't on an email list, then he wouldn't have known. Because like when we did the Linux challenge, we yeah. didn't take help from Linux community members that would not we have given us help. Yeah, we could have. I, I would have. <laughs> I, uh, come on. Like... Think about the way that the Linux community wants to promote Linux, and they and they do, and that's a good thing. It's Absolutely, a good, it's yeah. overall a good Not thing for the world to promote Linux, which is a big reason why we did the challenge in the first place. So, but with that in mind, so through that lens, consider with the reach that we have and how much attention, how many eyes were on the Linux challenge, how much support the Linux community would have thrown at me personally to fix a problem that I had. But that was not the purpose. The purpose was to experience it as though I was not me and not broadcasting these challenges to a million or two million people. And I think that's, I think it's an important perspective. With that said, looking at these numbers, I will be installing that driver first thing yeah. when I get home. And I want to, because this is sick. This and, is and I have to give them props where props is due. I, I mentioned in an email back to them about this stuff because um, I informed them of everything that I just said because I want to give them the opportunities early and often to do cool things. Um, but I informed them that like we, we actually played Star Citizen. I straight up did not expect it was going to work like at all. Yeah, yeah. When Star we were Citizen. loading it, I was expecting that we were like throwing it under the bus <laughs> and then it was fine. Well, it was as fine as Star Citizen ever is. But yes, 
It was. Yeah, it was a little choppy here and there, but yep. it was on my old card as and well. And I almost got stuck in my ship again. But that's that's <laughs> normal. Like, I, there was nothing that I was like, okay, this is Ark's fault. It was just like, yeah. okay, this is playing Star Citizen in 2022. Um, so th I was quite impressed with how well it did that. Um, it's been completely fine in Halo since I turned off Reflections. I've actually had very, very few problems in game over the last little while. And this is a huge performance jump. Yeah. I mean, on the one hand, like, I kind of want to talk about Intel's 1.2 gigabyte driver downloads <laughs> and and the, pretty wild. the slow servers that that they are serving them from okay but on the other hand man if they're gonna pack this kind of uh feature improvement into these drivers yeah, i guess i'll get me. over it i'll download five gigabyte driver updates what if you're gonna do that what we're looking at here is DirectX 9 games and their relative performance going from driver 3490 to driver 3953 this is yeah. based on 1080p high and 1440p ultra settings across six games so over here this side is 1080p this side is 1440p and it's not clear if we're looking at you know one percentile minimum frame uh, yeah, yeah. rates or if we're looking at averages or whatever else but there's no denying that these are substantial improvements I huge mean, csgo has been an extremely sore spot for arc performance uh well really since the very beginning and a 1.79 times performance improvement is enormous. Massive. Like, we joked in our review. We said, like, hey, Intel, couldn't help noticing, bud, that your brand new GPU is getting outperformed by a card from, I forget what it was, from like eight years ago yeah. or something like that. And yeah, it was a high-end card, and this is a mid-range GPU. But still, yikes. Well, this at least puts Arc within, you know, modern GPU performance, even if it's not going to be at the top of the charts. This is enormous. The bigger news, though, the cooler news is how this happened. It's not like all yeah. of a sudden they managed to make the Arc architecture uh... <laughs> of the 700 series cards uh, better for DirectX 9. It's actually still running. I guess it would be Vulkan, I guess. Yeah, it's still running Vulkan, which is a modern API, and Arc has always been solid for DirectX 12 and Vulkan games. It's just using a translation layer. I'm not sure if it's Vulkan. It might actually be translating to DirectX 12. Don't quote me on that. The uh, XVK? Yeah. Uh, no, it would be Vulkan, right? I think so. Oh, crap. Nice. I hope I'm not getting okay. this wrong. Guys, guys, jump in if you if we're getting this wrong, but I'm pretty sure. So, Sorry? It is yeah, Vulcan. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, so they're using mm -hmm. what is actually like one of the foundational components of, um, what would you describe it? How, how would you describe it? What, what's what's Valve's name for their uh, proton? For, uh, yeah, for, yeah, proton. Do they still call it proton? I think so. I thought they might have rebranded it. Anyway, uh, but it's one of the foundational elements of proton, which is what Valve is using to take DirectX games that were never designed to be run on Linux, convert them on the fly as you are gaming them, are gaming them as you are playing them into um, into Vulkan. So, is that wild or what? Yeah, uh, DXVK Vulkan-based implementation of D3D9, D3D10, and D3D11 for yep. Linux slash Wine for Linux slash Wine slash Windows. Apparently, yeah. So that's Lin cool. Linux API hackery being used to make Intel's like seventy nine percent performance increases yeah. in CSGO on Windows. Imagine that's sick. Imagine anything else in the world where by instead of running it natively, running it through a translation layer gets you an eighty percent performance improvement. That's pretty wild. Uh, so I think what we saw, I don't know if it was one like first percentile whatever stuff um but apparently it was a 2.3 times boost in 99th percentile fps in csgo okay pre ptors says they aren't just using dxvk but their code contains some components of dxvk yes and no it's not related to proton other than that proton also uses dxvk i, I know i said that saying. dxvk yeah. was one of the foundational elements mm -hmm. of proton um yep. 
that is isn't is open source cool or what? That's pretty sick. This is this is a very very good use of it. I'm very happy about this driver update, and I hope it treats you well. And we'll see if I get to use it at all. Apparently, it's an even bigger boost to 99th percentile FPS. That's what I was just saying. Uh, Shrout tweeted about it. It's two point three times. Oh, did I totally miss that? You did. That's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I was uh, I was checking some what people were saying in chat. There was some. Okay, I want to address that really quickly. I'm going to oh, go off the rails. Actually, hold on. Can I go off the rails really quick here? Sure. It's not that I ignore him. Okay. People thought I, I was so. Oh, are we talking about the same thing? <laughs> Go for it. No, you do it. You do it. <laughs> I was gonna say it's. Uh, pe people keep saying like, oh, line, like there was a lot of comments about this on our GPT chat. They were like, oh, Luke's talking about stuff and he's ignoring him. That's not how it works. We both do the same thing, and it's always worked this way. And I'm sorry, but it's always going to work this way. If the other person is talking. The other one is going to be trying to either listen because they know they're going to throw back with something and they know they can continue the conversation, or they're going to be doing something to try to find ways to continue the conversation after that person is done talking. During the GPT conversation, he was typing stuff into GPT, getting examples to show on screen, learning about it. I was doing creating all this an account. Stuff. Yeah, he's like doing things in order to keep driving forward. It's not It's not that we're ignoring each other. We don't just sit here and like think about bananas or whatever. Like I don't if know. I'm on my phone during the show. He's doing something. I, 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 could, I can tell you, you can be damn good and sure that what I'm doing is either something that is on fire yeah. and I must be aware of, yeah. or it is related to the show. Yeah, so you might not be like dragging on the every word of the other person, <laughs> Yeah, but we're still engaging. I would never drag on every word you say. That's probably fair enough. I think the word you're looking for was hanging Draw on. Draw on? To hang on? Sure, there we go. <laughs> I got there. Uh, <laughs> it's probably good that he doesn't, because then there'd be more of those. Uh, <laughs> I would tease him so much more. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, don't don't worry about it. It's fine. He's not, like, I know... <laughs> I had so many people diving to defend me. And I'm like, there was never a it's problem. It's like well, weird, weird gamers. <laughs> yeah, Just... yeah, yeah. Like, I, I appreciate that you, you care. Um, but I'm fine. Uh, it's going to be okay. Oh, man. But yeah, like, it's... And there was some people that pointed out, like, yeah, I mean, he was writing prompts to GPT, whatever. But like, yeah, those things happen. It's okay. It's fine. I do the same thing. He knows. Everything's all good. Yeah, we're actually okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the other things that's okay is uh, the best way to send messages to the show is using merch messages. Ah. Why don't we do a couple, and then if you guys have anything you want to pick up on LTD Store, or if you just want to pick up a gift card so you can send in a merch message, don't use Super Chats, don't use Bits, don't use anything like that. Use merch messages, because that way you can throw money at us, just like any other live show, but then magically... You will get merchandise in the mail. Hey, in a while. Yeah, I mean it's December, so yeah. like you know, yep. but but it, 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 yeah, it, it'll show up. It'll show up, and we do have something to talk about on the show today. Um, Linus plushies have been moved to the bonus bin. Whoa. It is unlikely we will bring these back, so you are gonna want to tack one onto your order while you are there. For those of you who have forgotten. Uh, Linus plushies are... Oh, actually, you know what? I might as well show you how to use the bonus bin. So if you were going to pick up a screwdriver, it would add to your cart. Look how wonderfully this it's website works. Oh, yeah. The, then you would expand the bonus bin, and you can grab anything from the bonus bin. We've got cute little shoelaces that come in a power supply thing, the 2022 sticker pack, and the Linus plushie. Go ahead. You, you get one. Throw that in there. Yeah, you only get one. Everybody gets one. One bonus bin item, and that's it. You can see the thing The thing goes away. So that's the promotion for this week. Go check it out and send in a merch message if you want to interact with the show. All right. Oh, yeah. Want to throw us a merch message, Dan? Sure, I got one here from Dimitri. Linus, how's your knee after the fight? I've had a torn meniscus repair surgery in the beginning of this year, and recovery wasn't fun. Um, fortunately, it wasn't torn, torn again. It just felt like... It's, it's been a bit of an ongoing thing for me. It just felt like the existing not perfection of it was aggravated. So there was a span of... I was limping for a day or two, in enough pain that it was hard to sleep for three to five and in enough pain that it was hard to enjoy myself properly for a couple of weeks. Um, now I have pretty much forgotten about it um, and I'm pretty sure I can do my thing. 
This is my is my knee okay test. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what this is. Yeah. Are they gonna be able to see very well? Yeah, I don't know. So I basically That's go. Okay, how we feeling? Jump on the knee. Okay, I should be able to go ah, all the way down and all the way back up. So that was just in case you can tell, there was like a single foot squat. Yeah. If I can do that without agonizing pain, then it's it's great. And I will not complain, not yeah. even a little. Yeah, yeah. But there are times like it's definitely not a hundred percent. And particularly when what what kind of what kind of force would like this be called? Like lateral force? I or so. like yeah. So if there's lateral force on it, every once in a while, because it feels so good day to day, every once in a while I will do something. So there was a big hunk of like, ice whoa. at the back door there. Um and I went to just like kick it with my left foot from the side and it went mm. nope <laughs> not that <laughs> not, not 100% yeah. yeah yeah but as long as i don't do that uh it's like really good that feels really similar this is not a tech topic but that feels really similar to my shoulder thing where like it feels fine all the time and then i'll draw really far back to throw something and i'm like oh yeah i can't do that all right yep uh, when I say enjoy myself properly, uh, I mean uh, I play badminton recreationally. That's like that's my main game. And if I if I can't if I can't play badminton at the level that I want to play it, it's pretty frustrating for me. I don't I don't like being injured, so I'll, I'm always like I, I'm one of those people that I'll be like uh, I I had a um, a rotator cuff problem that oh man that one plagued me for a long time. It wasn't until my um, my my brother in law actually like told me how to fix it because like doctors I talked to were just like, oh yeah, I don't know. It's like sore. I don't know. Massage and just like wait for it to get better. And it would just never get better. And finally he's like, oh yeah, that's like, that's like, okay. As long as it's not like a, you know, career ending, like horrible, horrible one, that's a super easy fix. You just have to be on top of it. Like zero weight, like do this, just do this, do this, do this, do this. Just like, just do, forward, backward. And so I'm the kind of person that's like obsessive when it comes to trying to recover from an injury. So I'd be like driving. I'm like, <laughs> like literally all the way to work. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because you need those, you need like many, 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 many repetitions with zero weight uh, in order to, to like build up the muscle so the thing can actually even recover. Um, so I tend to be I tend to be the same way about is, yeah, everything. Yeah, actually, someone just said this in chat. This is not medical advice. This is not yeah. medical advice yeah. at all. <clears throat> not even a little bit. It worked great for me. It might completely destroy your body. Consult a doctor. Consult a physio. Yeah. Put them put them together in a room and have them argue Make it them out. Duke it out. Yeah. Yeah. To figure <laughs> out what the best approach is for you. <laughs> all right. There you go. This is not financial advice either. I am not a financial advisor. <laughs> Um, for legal reasons, he actually said nothing. It yeah. was silent for the last 10 minutes. Uh, Negev says, I'm surprised BC doctors didn't know what to do. Well, it's not that. It was that at that time, I didn't even have a family doctor. Uh, it can be quite challenging getting a family GP these days, and there's a number of complicated reasons for that. Um, but the point is that, as far as I could tell, the clinic physician that I was seeing just didn't care. There you go. Uh, I have a good doctor now, though, which is... Uh, for, for hopefully she doesn't like get hit by a bus or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I yeah, do too. It's just hard great. to like appointments are all three weeks out, whatever else. But oh no, people want legal and relationship advice now. No, 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 no. <laughs> the show's over. Show's a Dan, end it. End it. Cut it. Linus legal tips? <laughs> no. Um, do you want another one? Uh, sure. Sure. I got one here from Austin. Uh, Luke Linus, when you first started having extra cash uh, to spare as an adult, what was your first luxury purchase? For example, mm. mine was Spotify Premium. And he really wants to hear Luke's answer. Uh, you know mine, actually. Ah, uh, hold on. You might f have forgotten. It's been a long time. We've known each other for a long time, but you know what it is. PB monitors. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes. Well, you should probably give them a little more detail. So my, that. my like, one of the first things I... Man, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I had these two really old monitors. You can actually see them, I think, if you go to the original oil-cooled computer video that we did that was in my, like, 
room thing when I used to go to BCIT. Um, it's a, it's actually a pretty funny video. I'd suggest checking it out, but I had these old junkie monitors and it was the worst part of my setup because him and I, as we've discussed quite a few times, have an agreement where he keeps me in good computers. That doesn't mean peripherals. That does not include monitors. So I've always had to get my own monitors. <laughs> um, and so one of the, one of the, yeah, one of the first things I did was I got some, um, they're actually pro arts. I got two pro arts. Oh, okay. Uh, and yeah, they were sweet. Yeah. Well, back then, not every monitor was IPS. Yeah. Like that was, and they were a really nice IPS. They were, they were wicked monitors. Yep. I was, if I remember correctly, they were on a pretty sweet sale, but they were still like, that was definitely a, a Lux purchase. And the fact that he bought two yeah. was a very unlike Luke thing to do. Yes. Classic Luke would have bought one and used whatever rat bag monitor, LCD, <laughs> TN, IPS, CRT, he wouldn't have cared. It could have been it could have been like an old TV at like like 1366 by 768 and like consume 200 watts at idle. He would have put it next to that I've, like I've the that. one nice monitor. Yeah. Uh, so that was yeah, that was a very unusual Luke move. I am back to three different monitors now. Um but <laughs> they are all Asus monitors. Nice. They all follow a very similar ID. So they yeah. they look like they fit together, which is kind of nice, but it's one of the pro arts because one of the pro arts still exists. Nice. The other one is dead. Yeah. Um, a, a newer like 1440p gaming monitor uh, that is my main screen. And then very recently, because my other pro art died and I liked having three monitors at home, I got another 1440p monitor. Monitors tend to be like, ever since I got those pro arts, something in my brain was like, I'm always going to have nice monitors. And I was like, I don't have to buy my own computers. I should probably like have some nice monitors. So I've I've kept myself in in good monitors ever since. So mine's a little bit complicated because I did buy myself. Okay, first of all, I'm not sure how you define luxury. I wouldn't necessarily think that everyone would define luxury the same way. That's um, fair. Yeah. Like I think Luke Luke's computer being something that actually makes him money um, might not fall under the definition of luxury okay. for some people. Fair enough. So if, if to you luxury means superfluous, um, you know, yeah, he obviously it could work without, you know, uh, having really nice monitors or whatever else, but he also didn't go top of the line. Um, and there's a, there's a, a, a health argument to be made for, you know, not having to like squint at your display because the contrast is so low, like, uh, you know, keeping your, 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 like, like even, even just like comfort, you know, like there's, I, I don't know if everyone would define that as luxury. I also don't know that everyone would say that Spotify premium is a luxury purchase though. And that was the example that was given here. Um, a slightly nicer sort of relatively low cost monthly subscription. I don't know that everyone would consider luxury where so some people might think luxury is like something utterly unnecessary. So your question's a little complicated for me because I don't know where the line would be between adult and kid. And I don't know what is luxury and what is not. But I can certainly tell you some early things that I spent probably too much money on and would could be considered luxury purchases uh, when <laughs> I was in um man so while you think someone in chat said man i wish i could buy a three thousand dollar monitor with a cord you can't remove <laughs> <laughs> well that's not something i bought for that's sure a good reference yeah um almost all of my almost all of my early stuff would be tech so if you disqualified tech i would have a lot harder of a yeah, time coming up with stuff <laughs> like i bought my i bought my 4400 plus which was a 700 dollar cpu when i was still in high school i think so I wasn't really an adult, but that was certainly a luxury purchase. I didn't need a dual core. Was I in high school or like right after high school? I don't know. It was it was around it was around the, it was around that time. Um, man, I remember my Monsoon MM two thousand speakers. Oh, okay, that was I was actually pretty sad about that. They sounded so good, and I took them back because they had kind of like this weird idle hiss. Uh, and they were so near to me because I was using them as surrounds for gaming. So they were really close. It was so near to me that they were really annoying. So I took them back to London Drugs being like, no, this is too annoying. I don't like them. And I got the Logitech Z680s instead, which sounded like absolute ass compared to the Monsoons. 
And I went back to the same London drugs and I was like, I'm sorry, I can't keep these. I want the monsoons back. And whatever, whatever it is that they do with open box items was not keep them in the store and sell them back to you again. They were gone. And then I found out they were Damn. discontinued. And that was like the last pair of monsoon MM 2000s in existence that I had had. Um, <laughs> when did the, when did the Corsair speakers come into the picture? Oh, that was, that was much later. I had, uh, I had Klipsch Promedia Ultra 5.1s was like a super luxury purchase Those for me nice. yeah. uh, pretty early on. Like all of my luxury purchases are going to be, are going to be tech stuff. Like I drove a 91 diesel Jetta that, um, that my parents made a deal with me. I had to drive any of my four siblings anywhere that they needed to go, but I got a car, but I had to pay for gas oh, was the deal. Oh, Interesting. I still think I came out ahead. But they did pretty well too because we lived in the middle of butt <laughs> yeah. nowhere, and it was a twenty-minute drive to anything. Yeah, and gas is expensive. That adds up really fast. Well, diesel wasn't then. Oh, okay. okay. So okay, it was moves. a so it was a pretty good deal. Someone brought up um, that my fish tank could have maybe been interpreted as a luxe purchase. Yeah. Maybe I, I don't think that fits the the idea of the question because it did say uh when you started having extra cash to spare as an adult, I didn't build it when I was an adult. And it took me like three years to save for or something. Doing like referee jobs and like shoveling yeah. gravel for people and like doing random like that wasn't yeah. Extra cash luxury. Yvonne and I bought really nice furniture when we moved into our place. Solid wood furniture. You've talked about that a bunch too. That was really expensive. That we yeah. still have to this day and intend lasts. to keep for our entire lives. Yeah. So is that luxury? It certainly is a luxury that a lot of people would never be able to do, but it's, it's also- Taking a financial hit now in order to save money long-term. Pretty pragmatic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, luxury. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. Interesting question. Yeah, it's a really cool question. All right, why don't we move into our next topic? Okay. Um, um, Nintendo DMCA's? No, that's a big one. Let's save that for after sponsors. Okay. Why don't we do the quick quick update regarding Yuffie port forwarding? Yeah, okay. So we should talk about port forwarding. Uh, I was doing that thing that we talked about earlier in the show last week where I was like sort of paying attention, but I was like working on stuff for the next topic. So I wasn't paying a ton of attention and I probably could have stopped this before it got to where it was um, because Linus was like sub summarizing something and it, it came across in the wrong way. Um, port forwarding is not a just like safe thing to randomly do for anything you could ever find that could possibly need a port forward. I was too blase about it last week. Yeah, uh, there there are absolutely ways that uh, vulnerabilities on services that are using open ports can be exploited. This is totally a thing that people do. And one of the ways that people do it is through junky IoT devices. That is absolutely a thing. I have no idea how we got here, which is one of the reasons why I wasn't really paying attention last week. Because <laughs> the whole topic was about how Yuffie was lying about how they did their implementation. Uh, I had not watched the video where the person talked about how in order to do it the way that they said they were doing it, um, and I'm super paraphrasing here, sorry if I say it incorrectly. I think there's actually a quote. Um, I will read the quote. So Rob from The Hookup said, the images in the notification need to be hosted on an internet facing server without authentication, and they need to be highly accessible in order for the notification speed to be fast which is important when you're doing like home security stuff that totally makes sense. Uh, if you wanted to serve those images directly from your home base, uh, which is kind of how it's described as it would work, uh, you technically could, but you would need to expose it to the internet directly via port forwarding, which would absolutely represent a huge security risk. That would be a newsworthy issue. Yeah, I wouldn't want to open a port for some random like IOT web camera thing in my house. Yeah, agreed. Um, but they they don't do that, and they never said they're going to do that, which is, again, why I'm like, what? Um, well, I I said that, uh, you know, obviously it would be better if it went straight from your device to your 
uh, you know, other device. Yeah, um, and, and there's there's been other stuff brought up where some people tried to dive to our defense and they were like, yeah. you don't need port forwarding to do local notifications. And it's like, yeah, but well, okay, I mean, remotely yes, you that's do. true. But the yeah. second that you leave your house, which is, I think, the, the bigger point of the yeah. notifications, um, it wouldn't work anymore. So you and would need to. If this product was designed with user uh, with user data protection in mind, there's no reason that it couldn't be configured in such a way that it would have no access to the rest of your network. Um, these That's are a thing. These are well. absolutely things that do exist. The main point, the only thing that matters, is that there are other ways. And yes, just opening up a random port to a random IoT device from a company that turned out to be a big liar. Yeah, don't do that. Is bad. Um, but if they just weren't a bad company that was being a big liar. Um, we wouldn't be having this conversation in the first place. And that's what matters. <laughs> they said that it was something that it wasn't. They lied about security stuff. That is the actual point that matters. Linus's point about uh, open ports last week, bad. Don't yes. do that. I don't think anyone was going to take action based on that. I don't think anyone ran home, jumped into their router's control panel and opened every single port that they have. I don't think it is going to change a single action that anyone did, but it should be clarified as wrong. So we are doing that now. Yeah, but also... Like I wouldn't freak out about opening a yeah, port for your if, Minecraft server. If you have to, well, that's the thing, right? Is that's the point I was trying to make is that you already open ports if you want to access anything on your local network from outside your local network, and so if you do that, then this may not be that different. But it also may because as we are as we are discussing right now. Sure. IoT device companies are not following best practices when it comes to keeping your data and yeah, keeping you, your network safe. Yeah, you don't want to open ports for like random stuff that could be not very well maintained. Um, that is that is vulnerability prone. Like I, I would be I would be concerned about opening ports for different things. Um, and you should hope that it's done properly. Is there ways around this? You could probably figure it out with some VPN thing. Maybe their app could run that way. I don't know. Like there's there's um, ways that they could have done this. Guys, Plex. Um, yeah, the, the saying you can't access anything from home, that's yeah, not really. But there's, okay, so the reason when you access Plex from outside, the reason that the bitrate is limited is because it's actually going through Plex's servers is my understanding. Oh, I have no idea about yeah. any of that. Um, and there's also people who brought up, uh, what else? Uh, someone brought up something else. Nat traversal is a thing. There's lots to it. None of this matters. And I would love to stop talking about it. Neither of us yes. are networking experts. Yes. Um, we hire people for that. Yeah. And we have some, Thank we have some good ones. Yeah, exactly. Um, to, to send traditional notifications to a device not on your network at home, my level of understanding would say that you would need to open ports for that because of the type of data that is leaving your house. Can you have data leave your house without opening ports? Yes. You can send emails. Um, but yeah, to, to do a, a, a traditional notification to your device away from home, I believe the standard approach would be to open a port. Should we do that? No. Was that something that Eufy did? No. Is that something that Eufy ever said they did? No. Um, and I, in my opinion, having a company blatantly lying about features be okay because technical people should know that it wouldn't work that way is not an excuse and makes no sense. And I don't know why we're talking about it. Um, so yeah, I would dive back to you feel lied about security stuff. That is the only part of this whole story that matters. Um, cool. Yeah, I think that's it. Speaking of a uh, network magic, uh, we, I think we're going to make a video about it at some point, but then we weren't like, we couldn't really find like a title or angle on it that, that we thought would perform well enough. Uh, but zero tier is a super cool way uh, to gain access to data remotely on your own network um, that does not require port forwarding. I have no idea what kind of black magic they're using in order to make that happen. The point is that it can clearly be done. There's other similar things as well, <clears throat> more in like the, uh, the corporate sphere. Uh, but yeah, there's stuff like that. There's other interesting things like you could set up your own VPN. Um, so that your your device is seen as on that network. Like there's there's lots of other stuff. Yeah, but the only regardless, thing, what only, matters only ones that could be easily set up by the average IoT buyer matter. 
in this in this instance. Yeah, but the, I don't think yeah. the average IoT buyer is going to dive into the control panel of the router and open some ports either. Yeah. So like I just I don't think any of this is is relevant. What matters is they claimed it was stored locally and it's not. They lied about security stuff and they we should be going after them for that. Nothing else in this realm uh, is important or matters. All right, why don't we jump into our cool. sponsors because they matter. Yeah. The show is brought to you today by Vessi Footwear. Christmas season is upon us, which means it is time to stay warm and stay dry. And buy Vessi shoes for yourselves and your family and your friends and your dog. No, they don't have dog shoes. But what they cute. do have is shoes that they say are 100% waterproof to keep your feet dry in the wettest of weather. And their shoes are lightweight and easy to pack, offering you reassurance when the snow and rain start coming down. Thanks to their Dymatex material. Uh, what else is good about them? They're super easy to put on and take off. Um, they're comfy, and you can check out their holiday season at Vessi Doc Holiday Season. It's not their holiday season; it's everyone's holiday season. We we can all enjoy the holiday season. Sorry, you can check out their holiday sale at vessicom show or use code WANSHOW at checkout if you just missed it for fifteen percent off plus free shipping to select countries. The show is also brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is a hands-on and interactive way to learn STEM topics. They offer thousands of courses with new topics to learn each month, like their Computer Science Fundamentals course, and their services can be used to supplement a college education, or you can even use it if getting smart is just a passion of yours. That's right. Anyone can use Brilliant and become brilliant. Well, it can make significant steps towards yeah. being more brilliant. If you don't understand the basics behind a problem, how can you even start your troubleshooting? And that's really where Brilliant shines. Haha, <laughs> that's a joke. Hey. That's, a, that's where Brilliant shines. Yeah, okay. That's where Brilliant shines because they can really help you build a foundation. So whether, you know, there's so many ways to, to get an education. There's your formal education, right? But Brilliant is great. After you have one, it can be great as a refresher. It's great before you get one so you have foundational knowledge as you go in or you can just learn things and just be a more rounded individual. There's, man, there's so many situations in my life that I found myself, you know, a little bit fish out of water and been happy that I know just like a little bit about that thing. Even if it's just so you can participate in a conversation. Yeah. Or even, even just enjoy listening to, you know, the group conversation that's happening. Know what people are like even saying. Sitting there like this. Yeah. 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 Uh, the first 200 people who head to brilliant.org slash when will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Finally, the show is brought to you by Newegg. Millions of customers turn to Newegg.com to shop for the latest PC components, consumer electronics, smart home, and gaming products. And with the holidays pretty much here, it's time! Do it now! Don't wait! It's time to shop for all the tech lovers on your list. Seriously, don't put yourself in a position where it's the 25th and you were supposed to have something for them and you don't. Yeah. It, for real, it's the 9th. It's the ninth. It's coming. Lots of places are already putting up notices that if you buy stuff now, it will not arrive in time. Including LTTstore.com. Yeah, so like, get on it. Let's go. They've got great deals on great tech. They're still available. Or you can save on gift cards for gaming, digital downloads, and more. Check out Newegg at the link in the video description. All right. What did I say we were going to talk about? Uh, I don't oh, know if you the said Nintendo any. thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's talk about the Nintendo thing. This sucks. It's weird. Um, the the source that we picked this up from is I think Kotaku, and it everything about it just sucks. Uh, did you know gaming's video about just <sighs> basically they posted a video two months ago. Okay, documenting the pitch that Retro Studios made to Nintendo in 2004 for a Final Fantasy Tactics-like Zelda game. Months later, Nintendo issued a copyright takedown, forcing YouTube to remove the video. What? This is not even a game that was ever made. And given that this is from 2004... In 2004, it was pitched. That was 18 years ago. Clearly, that game is not happening. Yeah. 
It's odd. Did you know gaming has published hundreds of videos about the history of Nintendo games, but this is the first takedown notice from the company. Um, and this is a note from Riley. And strangely, they started with the one that makes the least sense. The video's primary source was the original 22-page pitch document and an interview with its author, Retro Studios programmer Paul Tuzur. No footage from early game builds was shown because there were no game builds because the pitch wasn't successful. Why would Nintendo go after this video? Did you know gaming told Kotaku that it's one of the few videos on the channel that documents a piece of Nintendo history that was first uncovered and reported on by us. So this is original reporting from primary sources that aren't even Nintendo. Yeah. I don't even really get it. Like, can this... St I mean, I guess it's a DMCA thing. So if they wanted to... Uh, if they wanted to get rid of it, you have to, like, take it to court. Because it's always presumed that the person who places the DMC down is correct unless you go to court, right? I think that's how that works. Uh, you... you uh, well, that's... I, I think you're describing more like the process for fair use. Okay. Um, but you can, fair use would be a defense right, of right, a copyright right, right, claim. Right. So yes, sort of. Yes. But like, yes. they can't fight this through YouTube unless they go to legal. They measures, can appeal it through YouTube. But then but it's entirely up that, to Nintendo to just say no. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So like they, they have no real recourse. If Nintendo decides... That just like nope, we don't care. They yeah, can we disagree with you. They can hardline it unless they yes. bring it to court. So like, what? <laughs> now, did you know gaming also told Kotaku that they heard during production of the video that Nintendo didn't like how many former Nintendo employees were discussing unreleased Nintendo it games? Doesn't matter. Which I mean, I can understand why they might not like it, but also um, go f yourself. Like that's not. Um, especially, I mean, we're talking 18 years ago, right? So yeah, I, I get it. You know, when people have an NDA and there's proprietary information that they are privy to as part of their employment agreement, and then they leave and they start talking about that stuff that was considered to be proprietary company information, especially if they're trying to profit from it, that is, that is absolutely an ethical gray area. Um, mostly, however, mostly for the people who, the person who disseminated that information to Did You Know Gaming, though. Yes, not it's not Did, Did You Know Gaming know, themselves. Exactly. Did You Know Gaming mm -hmm. is just doing what journalists do, yeah. which is finding information and telling people who want to hear about it that information. They have done nothing wrong here. And so for Nintendo to go after them is what makes no sense. Nintendo could absolutely have a bulletproof NDA with whoever, and they could absolutely take legal action against that person. That's within their rights. That's, that's, I mean, I'm telling you why they don't like people giving this information. Well, because they probably feel like they have an agreement that that information shouldn't be out there, but they're going after completely the wrong party in this exchange of information here. Did you know gaming did nothing wrong here? Yeah. Um, now this is what 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 is this? Sorry, what is this tweet? Did you know gaming has been poking and prodding in Nintendo's history for far too long? Frankly, the best thing would be for Nintendo to sue them into next year in hopes they finally go away for good. It's Whoever you are, are you an idiot? We don't want any form of journalism. <laughs> That's weird. That's a bad take. Are you, uh, um, hello, Nintendo? Um, is that you? <laughs> there's, there, there's nothing really else to say about this other than that Nintendo seems absolutely determined to be the most hated company in gaming. Uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough, you know, when you're going up against Blizzard. Um, Activision Blizzard, excuse me. Uh, but boy, are they ever like really giving it the old college try. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And in other, I guess, slightly more positive news, uh, Nintendo has at the, I don't know if I would say it properly, a 
apologized, but they've they acknowledged. Have acknowledged. Uh, the official tweet says a software update for Pokemon Scarlet slash Violet version 1.1.0 will be released on 12 slash 1. Please visit our website for more information. We take the feedback from players seriously and will continue to work on improvements to the games. Um, I take issue with this. Apology? I don't think so. I, I take issue with I we take the feedback from players seriously. I actually... Um, I, I I I disagree. It impacted it, sales numbers a little bit. Yeah, so we'll I think that's the it. issue. If they took feedback from players seriously, uh, whichever Mario Party is the first one that came out on the Switch would have been fixed to make it actually f***ing playable. It's utterly unplayable. <laughs> the game, like the board game version of it, has so much unnecessary instructional and animation fluff. It's actually wild. With no way to skip any of it, no way to turn it off. The fact that that was not patched and fixed means no, they actually do not take player feedback seriously. They take a hit to their wallet seriously. I think by that time that game had already kind of sold. I think it had kind of run its course and they just stopped caring. Like, I guess we'll just make a new Mario Party game or something. Yeah, I, I notably like a lot of Nintendo stuff, but I have been under... Uh it's not good guy Nintendo. It's like never a good guy Nintendo. I think it's time for me to just stop giving Nintendo money. I didn't buy this. And it's easy for me to say when I already have a Switch OLED and most of the games that I care about, but like Breath of the Wild 2, maybe I just won't buy it. Oh, you liked Breath of the Wild a lot. Too. Yeah, I had like almost 100 hours in Breath of the Wild. I really enjoyed that game. I have individually more or less stopped supporting Pokemon games a long time ago. Um... I haven't bought a Pokemon game in forever because they're just, yeah. The same game? They're the same game. They're very uninspired in a lot of ways. And when they did this, like, what a joke. I, It's actually amazing to me that, like, almost anyone thought this was acceptable. Like, damn, dude. When it cost the same amount as Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild released a long time ago. Breath of the Wild looks better and runs better. It's like what usually games start looking better and running better the longer a platform has been out yep. because developers get more used to and just the industry as a whole gets more used to what that device is capable of and yep. pushing its limits and all the type of stuff. That's a very normal thing. Usually launch games don't run as well and look as well as games that come around near the end of a console cycle. The Switch has been out for a long time and this game is like at an unacceptable level of performance that you would have expected from a very poorly forced out, rushed, like failed launch game. Not a, not this, just, I don't know. Very disappointing. Actually, not even very disappointing. I'm not disappointed. I expected it. It's very like expected. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to do it. Just block it out? No, just 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 commit to not buying anything from Nintendo. The I don't oh because of the DMCA thing on the no, video. No, because I they've just, always been doing well. Not that. just that, just because they suck. They just suck. They hate their customers, and do I they, don't understand do they suck why. Proportionally more than any other individual group. Are you just going to block out buying video games? Because like, well, do they suck more than EA? It's Are not, you going to keep buying okay, EA games? Okay, it's not. It's not just that they suck. It's the spectacularly anti-consumer way in which they suck. Is EA the pro fact, consumer? The fact that there is intentionally no way to back up your game save data yeah. unless you pay a monthly subscription should actually be illegal. I don't know why. I don't know. I can't tell you what law <laughs> they should have broken. <clears throat> <laughs> hashtag not legal advice <laughs> hashtag not legal advice but from my point of view the save the save data of a game is is an integral part of the purchase that you made and the fact that that save data is tied to the console a thing that can break and we know breaks that has no way of having that data recovered if it breaks is utterly unacceptable and it's not, we're not talking about like the old, you know, oh. old cartridge days where the, you know, the battery could die and the save games could go with. That was a technological limitation. We're talking about a console that has a 
fucking micro SD card slot on it. Yeah. <laughs> that they choose to not allow you to use to update, to, to back up your save data, unless you are migrating to a different console. So they've shown, I mean, they showed with the Wii that they are completely mm -hmm. capable of creating a data migration tool. They choose not to. Yeah. And the fact that it's handheld, exactly. It is so much more likely to get lost or broken. Yeah, that's just, it's, so that's one example. The not fixing Mario Party to make the bloody thing playable. I actually timed it once. I forget what the exact timing was, but it was literally less than half gameplay. Ugh. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah, you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to skip it. This is not a usable game. And the way that they bully creators. To be clear as well with that, because yeah. I think there's been some 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 misunderstanding. It is playable. It's just horrible to play. Which one? Uh, Mario Party. Yeah. Like you can play it. Yeah, but I won't. Yeah. It's a complete waste of time. Like even my kids just want to play mini games. They don't like the board game version because there is so much sitting around. If you haven't played it, I don't want to hear your opinion on it because you don't know. Play it once, okay? Note how much tutorial and instructions that you don't need complex you don't need to be reminded that red squares are bad every fucking time. Like multiple times in a single play session. It's not necessary. You need to be able to turn that stuff off. It's Even like if just they a released... really simple, like every time you load up the game, like, do you want hint slash guides? Yeah. Or no. It's like, you know, the, you know, the like cringy, stupid thing that they do with Mario Kart, where at the end of the, at the end of the Grand Prix, they show the leaderboard, the entire leaderboard with all the final scores. And then they have this just infuriatingly long, I don't know if it's skippable. But it's just this stupidly long animation with a suspenseful third, second, for we know who won. I don't. You even already know. showed me. Yeah. Why? If it's skippable, it's fine. I'm not even sure. It's been a long time since I played. If, if little time. kids want to sit and you know the suspense, they 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 missed the you know flashed up updated scores or whatever. Yeah, fine, 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 fine. I understand these games are for kids. I get it. But why not make them usable for anyone else? Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah. I don't, but I like them. It, it doesn't quite... I like to play the games, though. I don't know. I don't know if... Uh, Can I take a stand here? I, yeah, I don't know if it's quite, if it's quite there. I, I, would, I would dig into, like... Um, yeah. Like, uh, wh where, is this, where is this line drawn? Because, like there's other companies in gaming that have done horrible things and are doing horrible things yeah. etc so like how many how many places are they're you just so boycott? consistent about it yeah they just consistently hate us and will not that will not pass on an opportunity to remind us um yeah. okay hold on hold on x war 2 on float plane says that's for bragging rights and to rub it into whoever lost fair enough but mechanics to allow bragging rights while also making things skippable have existed since the SNES days. Rocket League You a... allow the winner to control if it's skipped or not. Easy. That's not a bad one. Yeah, Rocket League makes it so that everyone has to skip, but it shows in the corner who hasn't yep. skipped yet. So you can like... So you can shame people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving on. Okay. Uh, oh, we should do a couple more merch messages. Sure. Because I'm sure there's a, a whack of them. Yes. Yeah, we've got some good ones here. Um, Linus, as a proponent of Optane, is the boost it gives worth the price for daily driving? No. No? Oh, do we still use them in the editor rigs, by the way? I think so. Oh. Maybe we should take them out then. Uh, well, my big thing uh, with Optane was that I wanted the lowest possible latency in the editing rigs across the board because we had observed in the past that when there would be um, access latency spikes to the main video editing server, Premiere would crash. And that was on a very old version of Wanix server, which is our, our, our main editing server. And so my rationale 
not that I had any sort of reasonable um, proof for it, was that the lower we could keep overall system latency, probably the better stability would be in Premiere. Uh, and because we don't need high capacity storage in those systems, the cost to go Optane was actually negligible because we would just put a low capacity Optane thing in instead of like a, a moderate capacity high quality SSD because you won't be able to get a high quality normal SSD in anything but sort of a reasonable capacity anyway. Only the like really cheap stuff is available in super low cap. So the price difference was actually pretty negligible. Um, I isn't opting like dead yep yeah okay i'll miss it all right got another one here from robert second time buyer love the screwdriver mm -hmm. have any of you ever felt pressure as a public person to speak out on political things not giving an example oh totally yeah um like I mean, I, we've literally like it doesn't actually depend how you uh, apply the word pressure because yes um but we've had like We've had big Reddit threads about how we didn't speak on something or other. We've yeah. had the worst is when you do emails. talk about something. Um, you know, the second that I, for example, condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine, um, immediately my entire timeline is lit up with why aren't you condemning these other things? Yeah. Uh, what do you think this is okay? Well, no, no, that's not, I didn't, I didn't say I thought that was okay. No, because I said I like waffles. It does not mean that I hate pancakes. <laughs> yeah. What I said is Russian warship, go f yourself. That's all. <clears throat> that's a good one. Want some more? Debbie. Sure. I got another one here from David. Linus, if given the option, would you ever be in a movie? There's a book and soon to be film called Project Hail Mary. You should read it. While reading it, I pictured you as the character Steve Hatch. Look him up. Okay. Uh, I mean, maybe enough time has pat. Hi. Hey. Oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. That's what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Maybe enough time has passed that this is clearly like not happening. And... Yeah. Is that is that the answer? I don't know. Are, are we okay? Should you do this? I think as long as we don't name any names or reveal any plot details, yeah. I think we can probably talk about it at this point. That seems fine. Okay, I did act in a movie. Um, <laughs> it was like, hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up because I'm probably gonna get the date wrong. Um, it's been a bit. Luke actually helped out a lot with it because uh, some key parts of the plot were <laughs> highly technical and or related to hacking. And we were told it that super whack. We were told that it was kind of important to them that the details of because it was kind of a central plot point. We were told that the details of it um, were important. They 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 wanted it to you know, obviously the suspension of disbelief, right? But uh, they wanted it to not be completely f***ing stupid, you know? Um, so Luke and I actually spent many hours. Uh, thank you, Luke. And, and not all of it got approved. And and if this thing comes out, there's going to be like... Uh, if it comes unquote. out, it's going to be brain dead stupid. I'll say that. <laughs> I will say that because Luke and I went through a version, made sure that everything yeah. kind of made sense. Yeah. And then from my understanding, and I could be wrong, it could actually end up being really good, but from my understanding, so many significant things changed after Luke and I kind of went, okay, we've nailed down all your technical stuff. It actually kind of makes sense. Um, by the way, you need to like fundamentally change some stuff because that is <laughs> shockingly dumb. There was some um, like actually like really bad stuff. I, I was, I was CC'd with the script writer not realizing it <laughs> when I like, I dunked, didn't know that. Uh, like, like any, <laughs> any eighth grader should know that that is <laughs> stupid. Um, I didn't go quite that hard, but that was my tone. Um, <laughs> anywho, so Luke and I, Luke and I made a bunch of changes and we're like, okay, it actually is kind of coherent now. I thought then, our changes were pretty good, actually. Yeah, it was. It was like the the the, the people people going to be asking for the Luke and Linus cut at some point. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, 
the version that I looked at after those changes were made that pretty much undid a lot of the changes and took a third path in many other ways was kind of bad. Yeah. Pretty dumb. Yeah, he sent it to me and he was like, well... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure glad we spent many hours making this not stupid. Yeah. Um at some point I I had I had asked uh about or or okay, at some point there was a discussion around me being credited as like a technical advisor for like the the stuff and I was like, yeah, it should be both of us, but I think that would be super cool. Um and after we got the like final version, I was like, hey, not only am I chill with you guys not putting me in the credits, but I would actually prefer to not. <laughs> Please be, don't. Yeah, do not credit me with this because this is no longer even remotely intelligible as was, far as the, the tech side goes. It was kind of fun to do. It's just disappointing that they, they didn't. Yeah, it, it was a fun process. And like, yeah. honestly, what it turned into was Luke and I just like broing out and talking about tech. Because it was like, oh, what about the feasibility of this? And like, oh, this scene makes absolutely no sense for this character. How about we not have that happen? Because it also makes no sense in any way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we like essentially rewrote a lot of <laughs> a lot of the movie. Yeah. Um, so we just like hung out. The only difference was we didn't have a camera pointed at us. Uh, so it's like fine. I'm not even mad. And like it's not. I wasn't being. Neither of us was being paid for it. I didn't offer to pay you, did I? Because I wasn't being paid for it. Yeah, I don't like think so. Yes. I don't know. If it was, it was really small. Yeah, uh, we ended up just like hanging out. Yeah, um, it was mostly because we were like interested. Yeah. So okay, here's the latest update I have on it. In uh, September of 2021, I emailed someone and basically said, "Hey, just wanted to see if anything came of the redacted movie." Uh, my email is just checking in. Is it dead? Seems dead. <laughs> and I got a reply. Uh, actually, quite a bit. Uh, uh, no, no. Shortly after that. Yeah, shortly after that. Not dead. It's still in post-production. And I said, um, oh, cool. All right. Any idea when it's coming? And then I heard back, nada. It will be up to the studio. That was over a year ago. Um, when it was actually shot was, here's my call sheet from November of 2020. Yeah. So it was shot two years ago. A year ago, I was told it was still in post-production and um, I haven't heard anything since then. I haven't followed it up since a year ago. Maybe I should. So, like, may maybe it is still maybe, maybe it's still a thing. And some people are making comments. Uh, someone said that there were so many complaints about hacking scenes in movies being bad that a bunch of scriptwriters started trying to make them intentionally bad, stuff like that. That would explain a few movies that I've seen. We didn't try to make it, like, hyper-realistic, to be clear. Yeah. There was parts that were just, like, if you were watching it and you found electronics remotely interesting you would have been like what is even happening yeah so we tried to like fix that <laughs> so like things actually made like some amount of sense um that that was more the goal we also tried to make it like kind of fun so we we added some things that would just be like entertaining yeah um, but yeah yeah so uh anyway I don't know. Maybe it'll show up at some point. I will not be telling you guys anything about, like, I I, I signed an NDA. I'm obviously going to respect it. I'm not going to tell you guys anything about anyone who was involved in it. Like, there's, and I can tell you guys, there's no way that you're going to get it right if you try to take anything that we talked about today and figure out what exactly we're talking about. There's no way. There's just no way. Uh, so if it comes out, um, I'm pretty sure my appearance, my appearance is classified as a cameo, so I'm not even going to be in the credits or anything. I'll just like be there and you'll be like, what? But you probably won't watch the movie anyway, so you probably won't see me and you probably won't be like, what? But yeah. 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 So, so I was, it was, it was fun. It was interesting. It was cool. 
Uh, I would I would totally be down to do something like that again. Yeah. Like I said, it was for like no pay at all. I just didn't I didn't care. I have a job. I don't need to make money acting. And like I'm not a good actor, so obviously you know <laughs> not gonna expect to be paid to be an actor. But it was it was definitely fun. It was fun. It was not a porno. Can, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can confirm not a porno. Nobody needs that. Uh, on that subject, actually, Markiplier. <laughs> uh, what a transition. Released his OnlyFans. Let's um, go. For charity. For charity, right? Yeah, okay. Um, what charity is it? Are we doing this? Are, are we are we signing up for Markiplier's OnlyFans live on the show? I, I'm not going to lie. I did just Google Markiplier OnlyFans. Um, yeah, there it is. I'm going to get the real-time blur going here. Okay, all right. All proceeds will be donated to the Cincinnati Children's Hospital, in brackets, my hometown, and the World Food Program. All, all right. proceeds. All proceeds. Wow. That's one way to, you know, drop it out, I yeah. guess. I mean, yeah. whip it out? Whip it out, sure. Do some, something out. Yeah. Uh, Clonk it on the table. Be aware that this is real, mm -hmm. and I am really me. Simply read this in my voice. Uh <laughs> Okay. Yep. This is this is a thing. There's one post in three media. One post. There three are twenty eight thousand yeah. likes on the one post, which indicates to me that there are at least twenty eight thousand people who okay, signed up for this because you can't you can, like it if you, you can don't... subscribe for free. Okay. So how does that work? Do you have to buy the media? Uh, I don't know. I as I have to confess. I have nice. only used OnlyFans as a meme, as a creator, as a, as a creator <laughs> and for a meme. I don't actually know too much about how it works. Does, I the, don't... does someone in the flow plane chat want to like out themselves and explain how that would work? Because because <laughs> part somehow the money has to go to charity, right? But subscription is for free. So do, uh, subscribe to see users post. Would you have to pay for the media? things i don't know and you get man. the post for free or uh, like how does it apparently there's no nudes it's only tasteful but... okay so what does that mean yeah what does that even mean we uh, we were wondering about this before the show is it like i think nudes can be tasteful everything and I think except the... non-nudes can be untasteful the dong or is it like <laughs> is it different for women we could consult yuffie <laughs> Yes, you buy the post. Everything but the taint and balls. <laughs> oh, sorry, balls and taint. Balls and taint. This yeah. is a reference to a previous <laughs> man show. It the, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just you just cover those up, and it's fine. And then it's tasteful. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but I mean, if you're into that, uh, if you want to see Markiplier in that way, you can subscribe, you can buy his I posts. don't know that I need to. Like, I could end up meeting him at some point, and I just don't need to have seen him naked. I have met him. This is a, I actually like this story, um, yeah. because it's so uninteresting, but I'm going to say it anyways. Uh, I was going to PAX, I was doing my normal PAX thing, where I'm hanging out with my friends that yeah. I've gone to PAX with for a million years, and we went to that... Starbucks. I don't drink coffee, but some of the other people I was with wanted some coffee in the morning. We went to that fancy Starbucks, the one where they like test out different yeah. beans or whatever. I I don't know anything. I don't know what this is, but we'll see it after. Um, and he was standing there with a lady, and he hadn't been hoarded yet. Yeah, people had not recognized him yet. So I have no idea if he knew who the heck I was. Mm -hmm. But I saw him from across the room, and I just did a head nod. And he did a head nod back, and then I completely ignored him because I was like, I'm not going to be that guy. Yeah. I was interested in going up and saying like, oh, hey, I'm from this thing. How's it going? Whatever. But I was like, I don't want to be the person who starts the inevitable wave that is going to happen whenever Markiplier is at PAX. Right. So I was just like, I'm going to be a bro and just stay over here. It was cool. ChatGPT's got us uh, covered here. A tasteful nude photograph is one that is artistic nice. or aesthetic in nature and does not depict explicit sexual activity or genitalia. Okay. It is a photo that celebrates the human body in a respectful and non-objectifying way. So, so no dongs, uh, no tacos, yeah. but buttocks and breasts probably okay. So that's the one that I'm wondering about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think it would have to be without the 
so I, I would say cheeks are fine, but you know, yeah, okay, starfish not so much, right? Yeah, but the top. That's why I'm yeah. saying is it different yeah, for women? No, yeah, it's not. It's that's not genitals though. That's a, it's still considered a secondary sex so characteristic. So that's tasteful. I, I look. I am not. I so if if I'm not the one defining it here. So if Lady Plyer did a one of these, she could be topless. The definition of a tasteful nude photograph would not change based on the gender of the person depicted in the photo. Okay. All right. I had no idea. It is important to note, however, that different cultural and societal norms may affect how a nude yeah. photograph is perceived, and the same photograph may be considered tasteful in one context and not in another. Ultimately, it is a matter of personal judgment and individual interpretation. Thank you, chatbot. Yeah, because there's a lot of, the, obviously there's like the free the nipple movement and like all this other type of stuff. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, if you want to support uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital and or the World Food Program and you want to see Markiplier in um, a state of undress. Yeah. Check it out. I mean, he's sexy. The, uh, the, the photo that you can see on OnlyFans is genuinely hilarious. I don't know if that's like a good idea to show on the show or not. He I showed a, it. He has, okay, yeah. With the champagne bottle. The, the yep. champagne bottle covering. Yep. The, yep. It's very funny. It's, that, is, that is tasteful. I would say that is tasteful. It's aesthetic. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, moving on. Okay, what else do you, what do you want to talk about <laughs> next? Did we talk about the... Oh, wait, we were supposed to do some merch messages. Ah. Very good. Okay, hit us, Dan. Yeah, that segue was too perfect. <laughs> too perfect. Uh, this is from Maximilian. Love the backpack and screwdriver. Mm. Linus, I wanted to ask your take on innovation in the VR headset space or lack thereof. Oh. It feels like nothing has happened since the index, not counting the incremental updates from Meta. Well, I wouldn't call what Meta's been doing incremental. I mean, or you got to yeah, you got to understand a lot of what's being done is on the software side. I, I think as hardware enthusiasts, we can tend to uh, be dismissive of software innovations, and you could you know you could look at like the the GPU space and kind of go, oh, there's like nothing happening. They they only we only get new GPUs like every three years now. This is ridiculous. Uh, but on the software side, there's a lot happening to enhance our gaming experiences. And I think we've just got to learn to be, even if it's, you know, not as fun, not as exciting, we've got to learn to be a little more, more open-minded. I mean, um, I would also argue that the newest update, while expensive, is a nice jump for people that wanted to jump in hardware. Oh, you mean the Quest t Pro? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's... The, the how slim it is, uh, like the, the weight drop, a few other, like that's, those are not the easiest things to accomplish. Um, I, I don't know that the, the complete package is really my cup of tea. I'd rather have something more like an index two. Oh yeah. I'm, not, I'm, like not, a, I'm, I'm just saying there is innovation happening. I'm not necessarily sure. saying it's the exact stuff that I would want. Um, I would also argue that if there is a company throwing, uh, as far as I can tell, infinite amounts of blank checks at a project, it might not seem the most worth investing in as a competitor. Um, while they seem to be burning to the bottom, uh, might as well let them do all your research for you. Uh, it's a lot easier to reverse engineer than to originally engineer. Um, so... I, th I think competitors right now, if anything, are probably just sitting and waiting and going like, yep, keep doing it. And then we'll do similar things later. I don't know. Yeah. Because like it doesn't it doesn't look like <laughs> I mean, look, look at Facebook's finance or meta, whatever. Look at Meta's financials right now. Like this doesn't look like the most exciting thing to jump in, jump into at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, I think we're going to continue in the VR the VR lane. We got one for him from Jerry. Hi, Linus. Have you looked into base stationless full body tracking like Slime VR or Haritora X? Uh, even though I daily my index, it's a lot of fun to put my quest and play VR chat with my whole house as a play space and with my slimes I made. Ever heard of these? Slime VR full body tracker. Uh, no, I can't say that I'm familiar with this they raised a million dollars i just like completely missed this evidently oh okay so they're just trackers that the inside out um tracking on the quest can see oh, oh that's clever 
That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, no, I mm. sorry, I can't say I can't say I've seen that before. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, as someone who doesn't really do chat VR, um, I mean, the concept of being in a state where I have nothing else to do that I must do such that I can just sit and talk with someone. It's like foreign to me at this point. Like on it, honestly, I, I just, I, I, I wouldn't actually, I wouldn't actually, I've had a lot of people ask me like, do you want your kids to like run the company or like, you know, do, are you grooming them to be YouTubers or whatever else? And I'm kind of sitting here going like, I don't regret any of my choices. I, I don't, I don't really believe in that, or at least I, you know, I try not to. Um, but I don't know that it's the best either. Um, like I, 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 I wish I could just. There's a lot of stress involved with talking being on the social ladder. Just talk, you yeah. know, just hang out. Um, like hanging out is not really something that I get to do very often. Work ending when you go home is a completely foreign concept for both of us. <laughs> yeah has been for a decade um yeah there's definitely downsides to it especially around here like trades are cool <laughs> you can find immediate work it ends when you go home yeah like the the demand for people in trades right now is wild absolutely if, wild if you are any good oh not if, even if you're if good. If you show up when yeah. you say you're going to be there, yeah, you will find work. Oh I yeah, promise you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know people that would employ you. Like, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I'm not exaggerating. Um, yeah, I don't know. Solid job security because there's way too much to work on. Um, uh, immediate employment out of school, a lot of places that will employ you as an apprentice and and pay for or partially subsidize your your education, um, good pay right out of school, yada, yada, yada. It's also, uh, it can also be kind of a, a downer for me. Like if what I'm actually after is just like casually interacting with people, being a public figure and showing up somewhere like VR chat, what are the odds that I'm just going to get to be anonymous? And I mean, that, that happened in Star Citizen, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like, that's yeah, a thing. Okay. I love that Star Citizen is like the metaverse, but before the metaverse was coined, it's just a star-themed metaverse. <laughs> this yeah. is metaverse branding. It's just it's stupid. I hate Meta as a company name. It's so annoying. Oh man, I I don't. I'm sure it'll happen eventually, but I don't see myself not calling it Facebook. Ugh, Meta. <laughs> It's like it's like a real much longer name now. Oh well. Okay, I've got another one here from Lori. Do you have Lori? Lori, do you have any ideas on how to collect community suggestions for products to review in the labs, like voting, but somehow normalizing by product type popularity? I mean, we could we could do like a submission system through the site or something but the goal like, for labs is to not need suggestions yeah the goal for labs is to test Just everything do everything yeah yeah i mean once we get kind of caught up the idea is that we could occasionally go back and test very consequential older products just in case people are using them and want a comparison point for uh, some new thing that they're considering uh, but the idea really would be to test every damn keyboard like every one that comes out uh, so that whatever it is you're looking for, it would already be on the site. Mm. That's the goal. All right. Why don't we find another topic to jump into? Okay. Young man crashes the game awards, rants about Bill Clinton. Yeah, we can talk about gets that. Gets arrested. Neither of us have seen the video. So should we watch it? I've seen the video. Oh, oh I thought you hadn't. Uh, I didn't watch the game awards. But I didn't understand what the heck people were talking about. So I watched the like 20 second clip or whatever it is. <laughs> That's far more enjoyment than I got out of it. I just like didn't really care. The complete and utter confusion of the people around him is what I'm enjoying. That was probably more funny. Um, <laughs> uh, the internet loved this. I was like surprised that it was able to happen. Um, <laughs> but that's about it. I don't know. 
Valve was giving away a 512 gig Steam Deck every minute during the Game Awards, which is pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. It means I guess they uh, are doing okay in terms of catching up on their production. Yeah. Um, Elden Ring won Game of the Year, which is I I think that, that was surprising. pretty expected. Um, I don't know if I've ever watched the Game Awards. Not that it's a bad thing. I just don't watch any award shows. <laughs> like at all um yeah i i can't say that i'm that interested in awards shows i i feel like a lot of the experience can be had by skimming through the summary article the next day yeah i'm not i'm not against the concept i'm just not i just personally just yeah apparently he was uh potentially arrested paul tassi from forbes got in touch with him he couldn't talk about being arrested um he says bill clinton is his hero um and he didn't think he didn't know who better to dedicate the award to, so he's still memeing, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move Apparently, on. Apparently, the kid has pulled a f- couple other stunts previously. I didn't know this part. Uh, he shouted "Free Hong Kong" at a World of Warcraft panel in 2019. Also in 2019, he held up a sign at the Clippers game about Hong Kong after pretending it was a sign for the team. All right. Neat. Um, Austin, Mr. Krabs asked, Hey Linus, can you quickly touch on the decision behind stopping the, they're just movies podcast? I gotta say, um, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a shocker for me and a frustrating one. Um, I've talked, I feel like a lot about people assuming the worst of me lately. And this was so why did you yeah why did you shove the dagger in the back of their just movies? Uh, yeah, this was this was yet another situation <laughs> like that that was really frustrating for me. Like I understand I'm sort of the the, the front man here, um, and not every decision that I make is you know necessarily uh, understandable to everyone um, or right. Uh, I don't always get it right, but for people to assume some kind of of malice or some kind of evil or whatever else uh, when we're making a business decision and doing something, it just feels so unfair. Like, sure, by all means, ask. Austin Mr. Krabs is doing it right. Ask me. I'm not actually that difficult to get in touch with. Um, but why would you assume, for example, that you know, man, I've read some super frustrating stuff. Like, you know, what is up with Linus not being able to give some of his employees, you know, a little bit of time, you know, three man hours a week to record this passion project. Why is it always about all about money with him? And I'm kind of sitting here going, well, okay, there's so much wrong with this. A, it's not one hour each. But you think it's the whole, it's edited, right? So they actually do record for longer than that. They have to edit it. They, uh, okay, so you're, A, you're wrong about the time commitment. It's a lot more than you think. Um, B, it, I wasn't even the one who brought it up. Like the, the, the discontinuation of the They're Just Movies podcast was not a Linus initiative. So you're just making assumptions. Um, there are, there are business reasons why it probably doesn't make sense to continue. I can tell you it's not profitable, but that is not the reason that it was ultimately shelved. Um, if that was the reason, it would have been killed a long time ago. It was, it's, yeah, <laughs> it was a team decision. And it's one that I don't know if the, if the, the team behind the podcast is going to talk about how everyone feels about it individually, but ultimately it was a team decision that was made and we're not able to move forward with it. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm evil. It just means that for Linus Media Group Incorporated, it doesn't make sense to continue that project. Like, what do you, come on guys. Ugh. Yeah, evil Linus shoots down small podcast. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, Blaze Henry one says, Linus, you're taking random criticism on the internet way too personally. My personal critique of you on the internet. Yeah, the thing is that it is personal, right? It, it, it is personal. It's this personal attack that is just based on an assumption rather than being based on something that I've actually done. And a lot of the time flies in the face of, every public action that I've ever taken before and since. So it's just, yeah, very, 
very, very, very frustrating. We've taken a lot of criticism over yeah. the years. Sometimes it's super founded. Sometimes yeah. it's not. Oh, sometimes um, it's very valid. And it's, it's, I, and that's one of the reasons it sucks that, when it's wrong, I think. Yeah. Well, I do take cr critique seriously yeah. and we are always trying to do better. Which is why when the critique is not helpful and not based on anything and just sort of random vitriol, random anger, um, that I just, I, I don't know how to deal with it because I can't block it out. I have, to, I have to filter through garbage in order to find these nuggets that really do make me a better person or make us a better company. Which does happen. It happens a lot. Your, your feedback is valuable. Some people have abused this, but all, all the WAN shows or anything else that I'm in, I... I load all the comments which sometimes takes a while and then i control f for my name every time because yep. i want to know there's there's good stuff which is nice but there's also negative stuff and sometimes the negative stuff is very legit and i should act on that and i try to i don't know and sometimes it's not legit and it's really frustrating <laughs> yeah and that's just i don't know it is what it is yeah, and you know, I totally get it. Uh, it's 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 frustrating when a show that you love gets canceled. Um, and and I I don't want us to develop a reputation for creating things, um, letting you fall in love with them, we don't and then ripping them away. Well, we don't want to be Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I guess more on point. Yeah. yeah, like the 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 number of the number of shows that Netflix has left hanging on cliffhangers forever is it's uh, you know what is there an equivalent to the killed by google.com site for netflix. like Net for netflix shows that have specifically ended without wrapping up loose ends like i wouldn't count something like the dark crystal because they kind of it kind of ended it right and because it was a prequel you obviously know where it's going from here at least hbo has the courtesy to Cut them before they're even finished. Uh, no, no, no. The end felt abrupt. Uh, abrupt. 2nd, yeah, people are discussing it, but no, there doesn't seem not, to be not an equivalent site. There is. A, there's okay. a decider. Some website. Um, I don't know. Uh, has like a list of all of them updated as of December twenty or December second this year. So it's pretty new. Um, but there's no like killed by Google style thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that would be that would be really interesting to see because I know they've done it a lot. Oh yeah, definitely. And like to the point where <clears throat> it's really hard to motivate yourself. I feel this. It's really hard to motivate yourself to get invested in a new show knowing that there is a huge chance that they're just going to rug pull you and you're never going to know what happened to 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 the poltergeist living in Sarah's attic or, you know, whatever character or plot point we're talking about. Well, this is the same. We talked about this about Google a while ago with the whole kill by Google thing is it makes you not want to adopt new Google services, which then makes them kill more Google services. So it puts them in this position where like they can't release things that are going to work because everyone's so sketched out about it being pulled anyways. So eh, I think, good. I think sin for the win is trying to do the thing that you said where you will see their comment. You won't because they did it wrong, but I thought you should hear this. Uh, at Luke, you're looking super healthy and your hair is fantastic and we just want you to keep living your life at its best. <laughs> oh, thanks. I, uh, I, yeah, I've lost a ton of weight, like actually a lot, probably more than your son weighs. Um, uh, and I still have more to go. But I'm starting to get to the point where I'm shifting gears, where I want to start building muscle more than I want to start losing weight. Because I'm getting, I'm not there yet, but I'm getting into the area of the actual just raw weight that I want to be at, but I'm not at the composition that I want to be, if mm. that makes sense. I'm La still carrying too much fat. Lundo Spark asks, do we have a new name for the lab formerly known as Lab 32? I think we're settled on LTT Labs for now. We couldn't really come up with anything way better and... We already own the domain, so it is what it is. Yeah, we reserve the right to change things. Yeah, we yeah we could we could totally still change it, but we haven't yet. Apparently, someone registered killed by Netflix dot com in twenty twenty, so someone else had the same thought for sure. Yeah, they should do something with it. Speaking of Luke being wonderful, <laughs> Luke hosts videos again now. 
Oh, yeah. Good job. Uh, lots of really positive feedback on both the OVH infrastructure tour and oh, the... Lot. Yeah, it was like, oh, Wild <laughs> Luke appears! Oh, that's amazing! I told you I read every comment that has my name in it, and I, I do do that. That took a long time <laughs> yeah. with that video. Um, yeah, yeah. I It was weird. I looked at the channel, and half of the videos that were up were by you and half of the videos that were up were by me and i was like what year is it i know What's right going on <laughs> um i was like this feels a lot like uh like like 2015 or something yeah i know um but yeah i don't know N not particularly it just happened that we had decided to do the arc challenge thing a while ago yeah we had done the linux challenge thing before so that wasn't new yeah and we had decided to do uh, that I would go to well, France. He to called do. dibs. I did. Hard. I did. I really wanted to do that. Hard. I'm very happy that I did. Uh, but we, I, I, I called dibs on doing the OVH tour in France quite a while ago, and then they all just sort of happened at the same time. Well, Luke being in the arc, in his own arc video was not supposed to happen. That too. Yeah, that wasn't made up for a funny intro. Yeah. He just <laughs> his entire part got cut from the video by accident. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it it was more like chance than anything nothing's really like changing um i have i have more people to manage now than ever um yeah he like does not have time to yeah. be in videos not i'm not really. i'm not a regular video host i do once i'm actually working from office i would like to do things like um like tech links a little bit more often yeah. and stuff like that like, yeah that'd be great i don't want to be a complete stranger but i'm not i'm not a uh regular host you know you're not going to see me on the channel as much as you did recently um but yeah i do wish those videos did a little better i will say that um but one of them was a sponsored video and one of them was um i was one of a cutting room floor almost yeah so it's probably okay oh it did hunt one million there we go oh yeah no it's fine yeah you know what else is fine check this out what's this Oh, there we go. Oh, there it is. LTX 2023, baby. July 29th and 30th, 2023 at the Vancouver Convention Center. I will see you there. Yeah, I'm actually super excited because it's been a long time since I've been to a convention. It, this has been the longest in my life since I ever went to a convention that I haven't been to a convention. Yep. Um. So... It's weird. I'm excited LTX is coming back. Uh, we are we are branding the LAN, Whale LAN. That is official. Cool. Like, it is so stupid how some of our branding comes to be. Uh, was that, well, that one your suggestion? I can't whale remember. Land? Yeah. I don't remember. I can't remember honest. who suggested Whale LAN anymore. Um, but it was just based on like a silly conversation. A lot of them are off the cuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Sarah just did such a bang up job of the Dude. branding for it, the artwork, that it's just like, how could we possibly stop using it? So we're bringing back it? like the whale with the chain? Well, yeah. That's one of my favorite the logos. The whale with the chain is never going anywhere. For anything we've like ever had. So yeah, I'm actually so very stoked whether about it's happening. Whether it's at LTX <laughs> or whether we do more standalone LAN events, uh, I believe we are going to stick with whale, whale branding land. For, cool. for our LANs. Nice. I think we're going to continue to offer whale perks. So like, you know, five thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar tickets, and just like build packages around it that no, 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 actually maybe, hopefully make sense, <laughs> which uh, is insane. But yeah, and for everyone else, like just normal, like normal pricing. But for you know, whale land. I don't know, whale land. Sure. Yeah. Um, general admission. We have pricing up. Single day is thirty five bucks. Two days is sixty bucks. The BYOC is a hundred dollars. So that will be the whale LAN as well as uh, two days of admission. Oh, or is that in addition? It might that be might be in addition. Ooh, don't don't quote me. Usually on that. those are done in addition. I think that's in addition. So it's a hundred bucks for two days of whale LAN. That actually makes way more sense. Fifty yeah. bucks a day. Uh, there's add ons so you can do office tours, merch packs, uh, either LTX or whale LAN merch packs. And look at that, we've got VIP packages including the whale. 
ten thousand dollars. Grand. Oh my goodness. Multi-day access, dedicated BYOC seat, five thousand dollar customized computer, reserved main stage seating, express line punch card. That's right, you can skip lines. VIP meet and greet session, whale merch pack, office and labs tour with transportation and lunch, hotel room Friday to Sunday, food provided during the event, special thanks on LTXExpo.com and more. The whale package. People were were asking if there was going to be whale merch. I've already seen questions yes. about that. Okay. Oh yeah, there'll yeah. be yeah yeah. Ticket I, sale wait list is uh, right down here. You guys are going to want to jump on that. I have questions. Uh, they might be answered on the site, and you I might have be, questions. Yeah, I have answers, and they might be wrong because I'm not the one organizing it. Chase so, and Colton are on top of that. So whale land was was overnight. Yes. Uh, it looks like it is, mm, mm, wait, mm, hold on. Yes. Because usually in expo halls and stuff, this really? appears to be overnight to me. Whoa. That's so sick. Oh, that's exciting. You're not sleeping that uh, weekend, Probably are you? not. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Dude, that whale land, my dad was up until like. Your dad's <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> He's an absolute mad up, lad. He was up until like, I think it was like six or something. And then he had to teach a class the next day. And he just did it. And then came back. <laughs> Kept waiting. One of my buddies that was there stayed there until super, super late, drove home, noticed there was something wrong with his truck, wrenched on his truck until the morning, got his truck working, and then came back. Like, half the people we were with didn't even sleep. If you noticed, one of them just started doing push-ups before we played Left 4 Dead. I didn't notice that. You know him. I can say his name. It was Darius. Yeah, 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 yeah. He started doing push-ups for Left 4 Dead because he's trying to get his blood flowing because he hadn't slept. So he was trying to get amped up before he played us because we were like the team to beat, right? So I, <laughs> I love my my like old oh, school man. group of friends from high school yeah. and my dad go who's like part of that group of friends to be completely honest go go pretty hard. We're used to going to PAX and we're always frustrated because PAX closes the land like pretty early yeah to be honest and like i get why yeah there's li liability concerns and lots of things absolutely yeah but it's way cooler if you don't have to do that so i i am stoked i hope to see uh some of the people from the last whale land at this one that oh, would be really cool there's no way they don't show up because that was a good crowd yeah it was that a good was, crowd that was a blast it was a lot of fun yeah yeah and if you miss them maybe it's time to disclose this if you miss them at the LTX whale land, I might be working on access to a location that could potentially uh, result in like quarterly land parties. Do you not know about this? No. Oh. That's cool. <laughs> I like this. How did I not know about this? Uh, here, let me just give you a hint. Um... Oh, okay, I did sort of know about this. I just didn't know it was like actually happening. It's happening. Cool. Um, okay. I had heard the the grumbles of it potentially happening. It's happening. Okay, that's wicked. Yeah, it's All it's right. happening. Very I, cool. It's one of those things where it probably like as long as we don't lose money on it, like we did with Whale Land. Um, from a business standpoint, I think it's great for community engagement. It's just a lot of fun. I like fun. Uh, it was it was a really fun weekend. What's the point of being a successful business owner if from time to time you, you don't, don't just some take some of that money and just do something fun and we like, you want to? I I I can say this yeah. now as like a we know how as in we have done it instead of a we know how as in we have the concepts. Yeah. But we know how to run a good land. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was like really fun. There was activities to do a lot of the time. Yeah. And the people that showed up and we pressed people about this a lot yeah because we said like don't even bother showing up if you're no, not going to want to engage yeah. in group activities and we're going to have a bunch of events and group activities but people did that it was great like the the basically everyone i didn't really notice anyone there that was just being like super anti-social total wet blanket yeah, yeah like, everyone was engaging with stuff we would do like non computer gaming activities like we did chair curling yeah and like the whole place was up oh yeah it was wild and hanging out and yeah, throwing chairs around and stuff like it was it was uh 
it was very entertaining. I'm Hob excited about this one, and I'm excited about the potentiality of, of quarterly ones. Hobseltoff asks, if you're going to do it quarterly, can you sell a lifetime ticket? No. No. I mean, <laughs> the cost is, like, of running it every single time. It's not like software... Um, you know, where like you develop it once, sell a perpetual license for it. And then, you know, people have to like buy new versions of it later or whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. The, the actual cost is like every time. And I can tell you right now, like at, at a typical LAN admission, just, you know, like 30 to 50 bucks a day, there, there's actually not as much margin as you would probably yeah. think. Uh, Ooh. especially here in yep. Vancouver where, uh, rental rates are so, so yeah. expensive. When you're taking a dedicated space that big up um there's things other people could do to make more money using it which means it's going to cost a certain amount exactly i mean yeah sure if it was a million dollars or whatever yeah fine but like that's not what i'm sure that's not what you guys are talking about a sixty nine thousand dollar lifetime pass <laughs> i mean tell you what if you'll pay that much I will I will personally sign your golden ticket that gives you admission to every future Linus Media Group and Associated Companies event, all right? Yeah. With a regular level ticket, you don't get the you don't get the whale ticket every time. I think you'd actually lose money on that really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Take like 2 years. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I I'm going to confirm that the BYOC is extra. There. I did it. I I'm, I'm I'm pretty darn sure. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? I have notes. Holy crap, there's a whole bunch of notes I'm supposed to be talking through. There is. Um, it's So, it'll be in the West Building, so a different building than last time. It's a newer building with more control over the lighting, the ability to do more with signage. We're going from 78,000 square feet last time to 112,000 square feet to accommodate all the improvements we want to make. It's going to be huge. Uh, there will be the expo itself, office tours, giveaways, local activities, as well as the overnight whale land. There you go. Confirmed. Let's go. All ticket Let's prices go. are in USD. On-site purchases will be in CAD, but that price will just be converted from USD. So the price will be the same. Yeah. Uh, you can sign up to be notified ahead of when tickets are scheduled to go live. If you are an LTX 2020, remember the one that didn't happen, VIP ticket holder. You will be contacted by our team before tickets go live with the email you used to purchase That's your cool. 2020 ticket. We want to make sure that you, if you, if that was what you wanted, you don't just get scooped by someone else and you don't get a chance to get it. That's cool. Um, ticket sales are expected to go live around the end of January and we'll update ticket info on the website before sales if any major changes occur. We are going to need volunteers. You can sign up on the site to get notified when we start going through applications. Shout out to the awesome volunteers from LTX 2019. Uh, oh, if you want to know about booths and activations, we actually have some confirmed booths and activations. Uh, we have tidbits of info on those currently listed, and we'll add more as we get closer to the event. Oh, okay. Well, hold on a second. I want to know what we have confirmed. What's what's confirmed? What's going on here? Uh, Expo. Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Returning classics. The Retro Lounge. So it'll have more retro games, arcade machines, phone charging stations, comfy seating, and more. The Case Toss, an LTX classic. It's good. The goal is the same as always. Throw okay. a computer case as far as possible. We're going to add additional lanes to help reduce wait times. LTTstore.com will be there, so you can buy merch in person. Uh, CPU delitting oh, and cool. GPU repasting will be making a return. LTX is not liable for any damage that may be caused as a result of your teardown or modification of your components. Uh, and the Build a PC workshop. We will be allowing people to learn the basics of computer building with real working hardware. Mm, it might not be working, but it'll be real. Um, we might have to get that fixed. By the end of the workshop, you should have a computer that actually boots and runs, except you don't get to keep it. I really don't think we should do it that way. I think we shouldn't. Yeah, yeah you should just work. take broken hardware. Yeah, it we should make have a broken difference. hardware. Well, anyway, we'll figure that out. Clearly, there's still internal discussions to be had. Yeah. Uh, we have some new stuff, gaming at different frame rates, uh, so you can, like, really feel That's cool. uh, yeah. the difference. So we're going to have... Uh, since Minesweeper was getting a bit stale, this year's high score challenge will be 3D pinball, so get practiced up. Cool. Uh, you'll be able to do your first 3D print if you've never done one. We're going to have like an HDR experience booth. It's one of those things that's really hard to describe, but really easy to experience. Yep. Uh, we're going to have like keyboard and switch testers so you guys can try all that kind of stuff out. All the windows is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's every windows. Sweet. 
That's cool. See how computers have evolved. So you'll be able to just like sit down in front of them and like try and do stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll include games that were prominent on each OS. So you can kind of go through that, uh, that evolution for yourself. Lots of, lots of stuff to interact with is really the goal. Do we, um, this, this might, maybe I, I don't know, do it are, uh, is, is Bob and Rod coming? Uh, I don't know if we've explicitly reached out to them yet, but if they're not there, I'll be disappointed. Yeah. Me too. So we'll have to get that, uh, sorted out sooner rather than later. Yeah. Uh, Bob and Rod are our friends from BS Mods. Yeah. Uh, Rod's probably watching. Uh, Rod, consider this your formal invitation. Yeah. Whatever we got to do to get you there, you just let me know. Yeah, because they did. And they go, did go like drag a, Bob out of. They did like a hardline tube bending doing, yeah. thing last time. Yeah, I think. those guys are utterly amazing. Yeah, they were awesome. So. Yeah, yeah. Rod, okay, Rod's in the float plane chat. Yeah, I figured. He hey, there watching. he is. There he is. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Good stuff. We'll see you there, man. Uh, man, haven't seen them in three years. It's been a long time. Four. Yeah. What the crap? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Go f*** yourself, COVID. <laughs> For real, though. Yep. All right. Um, special guests? Ah, yes. If you are part of the media or a content creator and you wish to attend LTX, please email info at ltxexpo.com. Um, as... With last time, we have a, I'm not going to say blank check, but a huge budget for flying out creators. Uh, it was a really, really cool element yeah, of LTX absolutely. 2019 that there were just so many creators there, lots of collab opportunities. So even if, you know, meeting up with fans isn't necessarily your favorite thing, um, it's just a ticket plane ticket, hotel, and expo ticket with really no strings attached. You can come and do it however you want if you just want to get together and hang with other creators. Uh, you know, obviously, we'd prefer if you spent some time with the with the attendees as well. Um, but we're, we're not going to have any kind of commitments or anything like that. Just come on out. And uh, we, we just want to get as much of the tech community together as possible. Um, we won't be able to accommodate everyone, you know, obviously, if you've got like 400 subscribers um, and someone with 40,000 or 400,000 subscribers also want some of that budget, we're going to have to try to, you know, make it make sense, have as many people there that people want to do meet and greets with and stuff like that as we can. But uh, we're, we're going to try to accommodate as many as we can. That's when it comes to trying to like help people travel there um, financially, but like... Yeah, you can get you can get media tickets, no problem. Um, also, if your company wants to partner with us, go to ltxexpo.com/partners. Uh, you can follow LTX Expo on Twitter if you want to get updates, or uh, Facebook or Instagram. Oh, I have to disclose another investment. I haven't actually made it oh. yet, but I've said I'm going to do it because I think it'll probably be fine, but I haven't actually written a check. So if you guys are ultimately super mad about it, then we can just not do that. Um, so it's like, it's not too late, but they like really needed an answer. And I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty chill. Um, I'm not, I can't really name any names, but I will try and give as much detail as I can in the interest of you guys understanding what it is about. Uh, without causing any problems for the people involved. So someone who worked on a network storage product that I have really enjoyed oh. using for a long time uh, is no longer with that company and has a plan to create a NAS software that is basically everything that I've been, that I was asking for about that software and everything that um, you know, he, he and I have agreed on for a long time needs to be done to make DIY NAS more accessible to just average people. Um, so he is planning to to start up and has asked me to come in as like an angel investor and basically give him uh, a year or two of runway to get this thing off the ground. Um, obviously there's some equity changing hands, but it's not, um, it's not about that for me and it's not about that for him. He's already got some really interesting partnerships and he's already got some money from an established NAS software company 
on whose product he will be basing his. So there, there's, <clears throat> there's already some momentum, and I am um, very supportive of like his vision for what an what an easy to what a user friendly NAS should be. Um, and he just he doesn't want to go to a random investor. What I'm trying to say is he could, but he would rather not. And so he came to me saying, look, I agree with that. Linus, I think this is an amount of money that um, you can probably afford. I think that you understand my vision and believe in the product. Uh, from my point of view, we don't review NAS software anyway. Uh, we use it and we will continue to use it. But I, I don't see that as something that as long as we are sufficiently disclosing every everything that uh, anytime we're kind of covering that stuff, which we very rarely do, I don't see it as a as a huge conflict of interest. But um, yeah, so no one seems to really care. So maybe I just don't even need to keep. Yeah, everyone in Fulton chat is like, this. "Hey, it's cool." But I mean, you you do review laptops and you invest in a laptop company, and that was fine. So like, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, I my personal commitment to you guys is that I'm not going to let it affect anything. I haven't let it prevent. I haven't let my investment in framework prevent me from recommending another laptop over framework. Uh, at the end of the day, you guys are just going to yeah. have to trust me. And this is really like, this is really frustrating for me because I know of other tech creators who have undisclosed investments. We're not actually required to disclose anything. I mean, we also know of tech creators that have taken. Oh, I don't want to stir up drama. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the thing is, like. On the one hand, I think you it's it's really easy to pick me apart and say, hey, Linus is invested in framework, so he, you know, whatever uh, is bad and stuff. Um, but the reality of it is, like, guys, um, take the devil you know, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's from what my takeaway would be. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to pull punches. I think that again, this is this is a guy slash company who knows that I'm going to be his biggest critic as an investor, and because we've got had a long time, long term working relationship, I'm I'm comfortable with it, and so that's that's why I have soft confirmed uh, the amount will be quite similar to my investment in framework, so it's about a quarter million U.S. dollars, and um, if it comes to life. Whether I make back any money or not, I'm going to be stoked on that investment because I really want this software to exist. It would be nice. Yeah. Yep. There's just, there's something wrong with every DIY NAS software. And the tipping point for me was when I was at home, I had gotten the email like a week earlier and been like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> Cause I, 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 I don't want to think about what's involved in saying yes but I don't want to say no. Uh, I understand why they're coming to me, but also they're putting a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> I kind of wish I wasn't in this situation, was kind of was what I was thinking. And then um, for, for a number of reasons, I had to set up a NAS with something other than Unraid. So I'm, I'm using Unraid as my main like virtualization NAS and it's got all my hard drives in it. And I was, um, I was setting up a NAS that was going to be using SSDs for a significant amount of the storage. Unraid still doesn't support trim on SSDs, which is catastrophic for both performance and the lifespan of the drives. And I was like, well, that's not acceptable. So you know what? I'm a set up true NAS. And I was going through setting up TrueNAS and I started drafting an email back to back to this person with everything about setting up TrueNAS that is just needlessly obtuse. And I talked myself into it. I was like, clearly the product that I want to exist does not exist. And it might not it might not be needlessly obtuse. It is needlessly obtuse. Don't make me show it to you. In a professional stance. No, it's ne oh well yeah, sure. But I'm talking but for he's end talking users. talking about personal at home NAS, which like doesn't need to be overly complicated. 
There are some people that are gonna gonna have home labs and they want that level of complication because it's like an experimental ground for them. No, stuff like there's that. no reason for it to not work out of the box. No. Uh, you can have complication and you can have it be endlessly configurable. I'm not arguing with that. But it should work out of the box. Or if you press a thing that doesn't work, that is that is that contradicts another thing. It should tell you. If you're going to pop up an error message, it should be a verbose and helpful one. No, I reject that. I think an error message being verbose and helpful makes sense. I don't but necessarily think... But that's the think, kind of thing I'm talking about. I don't know 100% what you're describing. That's, yeah, to be that's clear. what I mean by obtuse. Well, that's not always what that means. Okay. Because you could mean, you could mean there's that's too obtuse. many options or too many settings or whatever else. No, no, no. Okay, I know. So obtuse means... Um, like it's kind of like needlessly complicated uh, or like unnecessarily difficult. So here's something. Yeah, but okay. You can't rename the root Z pool. Okay. Unless you use the command line. You can do it in the GUI. Or, or you, there's a GUI place to, to rename it, but you can't, you just, you just can't. Okay. But you can totally do it if you just like enter two commands. So why don't you put a thing in the GUI <laughs> and on the back end, it just issues those two f commands. That's fair enough. Okay, that's that's obtuse. Um, yeah, okay. An SMB network share can be created, but cannot be accessed unless you create a data set for your Z pool and happen across the little drop down to set it to SMB type. That's obtuse. So you would want it to automatically do that? That, that took me I would two want it, days to figure out. I would want it to prompt me. I, when I create my SMB share, it should say, hey, you haven't created a data set for your Z pool and set it to SMB type. Or you haven't set I'm trying your, to... you haven't set your Z pool to SMB type. I... Clearly, I want an SMB network share. And if I if there's a dependency, I should be prompted. If you have a GUI, it should operate like GUI software. I think that's fair enough. I, I do want to defend like command line straight up versions. Yeah, that's and, fine. And that's not what I'm that's yeah. not my problem. Yeah. My problem is if you have a GUI that has a field and there's obviously there's no like operating system sure. breaking problem that prevents you from changing that field because you can totally just do it with two simple commands, then you should be able to just change it. Yeah. Yeah. That's obtuse that's what that word means um yeah also like every other nas software i've ever used missing the most basic of buttons the restore everything to default button yeah how on earth does that not exist anyone can accidentally change something anyone no matter how experienced there should be a hey just reset to defaults both with or without destroying data sets factory reset settings is a nice thing to have um so you know this is just this is the kind of oh yeah it was a total pain in the butt to verify that i had installed to a mirror after once you're booted it's like not obvious that your boot drive is mirrored uh which was really annoying hidden behind some stupid drop down uh, deleting a random extra directory required a command line for some reason. Like, just obtuse. Which, again, it, it requiring command line, I don't have a problem with on its own, but when it's for normal users, then yes. If it's to delete a directory that, like, I can view, but just is impossible to remove unless I go into the command... Like, it... Anywho. Obtuse. And so that's uh, that's that's my hope. Um, that's what I hope this would solve. That's what I hope. Oh man, I feel like we were looking at the topics for this week's WAN show, thinking like, what are we going to talk about? And we have been live for like over two hours. And yeah, we. I, I told you we can we can riff on stuff sometimes. Yeah, iCloud now has end-to-end -end encryption and the CSAM thing where they're where they're searching for child sexual abuse material in iCloud photos has apparently been scrapped. Uh, they will still be monitoring iMessage. Um, the FBI is none too pleased about the increased iCloud encryption, saying in a statement, this hinders our ability to protect the American people from criminal acts ranging from cyber attacks and violence against children to drug trafficking. 
Uh, the British are apparently super upset about it as well. Obviously, we are... We take a realistic approach. We are mostly pro-encryption, pro-personal privacy, but also understand the other perspective, I think is kind of fair to... A fair way to... Yeah. To, fr to frame our stance on yeah. this sort of thing. Um, I also just... I don't know, man. I, I don't... I don't trust Apple that much. Um, I mean, I guess technically, technically, this is this is verifiable. It's just that the way that Apple protects their Chinese users' data is not very protected at all. It's, I don't know. They've 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 shown a willingness. They've 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 gone to they've gone to bat um, for user privacy before. Um, like the San Bernardino uh, killers case was a, was a really high profile one, but then they've also completely caved um, when the stakes are high enough. Like that, uh, if you go into if you go down the rabbit hole on that data center that they are mandated to store all Chinese users' data on, and how it's like essentially run by the CCP. Um, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. And once you have physical access to a server, nothing else matters. Yeah. So. Xbox games are seventy dollars now, though. Yeah. Are PlayStation games as well? I, I don't think so. Can we just can we talk about the fact that this is even news? Like the fact that games were pinned at sixty dollars basically from my childhood until now is Actually incredible. Nuts. Yeah. How much would that be? Doing a inflation calculator thing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let me. I'll, I'll do it real quick. I'm looking up. Uh, so. Oh, this is probably Canadian. Modern Warfare 2 on PlayStation is $90 Canadian. <laughs> that doesn't... That's probably about 70 bucks. Uh, yeah, because I thought, I thought PlayStation did it already. That's why I was saying this. But maybe yeah. I was wrong. I don't know. In 1992, if I purchased an item for $60, then in 2022... That same item would cost $127.45, which, in fairness, if you buy like a complete package or all the DLCs, many games actually do cost that much. Definitely. But there's been this, there's been this um, unwillingness or inability or whatever it is. There's, there's been this, this block that has kept game developers from, especially on console, from deviating from this like $59.99 sell price yeah i think they would have to all do it simultaneously for like the triple a 69 dollar price thing um or whatever it is but or 59 was it because that'd be 60 apparently playstation has been 70 dollars for ps5 yeah so i thought so yeah, sony blinks first a bit. yeah yeah that's and that's a difficult thing to do because you're competing against another console and yep. if that other console all their games is 10 bucks cheaper like i don't know that can be rough yeah this is pretty big. Uh, Adobe is going to be selling AI stock images. I have so many issues with AI they, art. They brand this as amplifying human creativity. Oh, I mean, really, I think Adobe. it can, but when it's trained off of other people's art, it's such a huge issue. I went to, someone commented on last episode um, saying that they were stunned that I had never heard of something. Uh, in the notes, there was something. They they fed GPT-3 prompts into this other thing, and it gave them interior design stuff. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of the thing that they used, and it was an AI art program. Yeah. So I went to go check it out. The front page for this, I don't already don't remember the name. It doesn't matter. The front page for this AI art thing puts, I think it's like six or nine random recently generated AI art photos yeah. on the front. One of them was like almost freaking identical to something that I've seen before. So I like called my girlfriend over and showed her and was like, I know where this photo came from and I want you to see it before I go look for it so I can prove that I called this. Yeah. And I went and found the original and it's like almost spot on. It looks like someone did some like fairly mild filters in Photoshop. Right. And they were just like done. Like it's really close. People are trained with other people's art. It's not the same at all. That's a bad take. It's <laughs> it's like when you when you farm it out this way, it becomes not similar. 
yes, of course, people are trained off of other people's art. People are trained off of other people's everything. That's how like learning works. But when you have it copy, it becomes a bit of a problem. Now, these things being original works becomes very questionable. Their generative AI policy prohibits submissions based on third party content, including text prompts referring to people, places, property, or a particular artist's style without authorization. So the prompt can't be a particular artist's style, but it can be trained off of that artist. That I don't know. They're saying that they uh, are going to seek to compensate people whose art is used to train the AI. Of course, this is a process that we have no way of actually validating as outsiders. Yeah. Ooh, we're heading into interesting waters. Apparently some PlayStation 5 games are $80, by the way. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. So that means Xbox games are still cheaper. Yeah, I guess so. Depending on depending on which one. Is it seventy nine? When they say it's seventy dollars now, is it seventy nine ninety nine or is it sixty nine ninety nine? I don't know. I would hope they mean sixty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Man, ah, see, I'm already I'm already screwing it up. We're supposed to stop calling sixty nine ninety nine sixty nine ninety nine. We're supposed to call it seventy dollars. I don't know if it's going to work. James is right, but I just don't know he if is. it's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, merch messages. What about him? Hit me, Dan. Okay. Um, got him from Elliot. What do you think the education system can, will do to counter the use of AIs, like ChatGPT for cheating? Um, I guess, you know, you could also think about these uh, Adobe AIs as well. Uh, Luke and I talked about this afterward. I mean, I think one of the big things is going away from um, assignments that are write this thing and uh, moving towards assignments that are more based around critiquing or um, or or validating a thing. Uh, I think that, I mean, you know what's interesting? I was thinking about this after we talked and one of the things that we did in our, in my like challenge English class was we would actually have to write the entire assignment in class sometimes. Is that valuable? Yeah. Because this, this comes back to the calculator question. Oh, yes. Okay. It's, well, it's valuable for the teacher because yeah, but it is shows it valuable them, for the student? Oh, okay. Yes. It's like, is doing five times five valuable in a world where you have calculators? But that's not what you're doing because in this case, we're talking about essay writing. So what you are doing is you are practicing the process of making an argument, which no, you are not going to be able to replace with an AI because you're going to be, have to make arguments verbally as well. So you are, you are training the skill of creating an argument, backing it up, and then summarizing your argument. That's what an essay is. And for the teacher, they are, they are then marking not just your, your grammar and spelling or whatever else, they're marking your thought process, your ability to uh, construct a cogent argument, which is arguably the most valuable possible life skill. If you cannot convey your ideas in a convincing way to other people, what possible hope do you have? That's why I liked, we've talked about this before, when my I found a teacher that wouldn't mark me on my punctuation quite as hard all the time. Because there was no way I was going to ever get that right. Yeah. With the, the dyslexia stuff and whatnot. Like it was always going to be a problem. So it was nice when he started grading on those things a little bit more. And that makes sense. You know what? Something very fun to do. Yeah. Is ask GPT how classrooms should operate in a world that has GPT in it. Oh, interesting. It actually gives like pretty good answers oh. related to kind of what you were just saying. Oh, cool. I wasn't actually in disagreement. I was just challenging the, the yeah, statement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like it's... Uh, I won't have to fire you. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, as my as, job remains. As long as you don't actually disagree with me publicly. <laughs> that was an almost straight face delivery of that. I am 100% joking. I f feel like I have to clarify that these good, days. Good, I don't have to fire you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. It talks about um, just doing things in in when it would be a problem, potentially slightly different ways. Right. Um, having people do observed original creation a little bit more yep. like you were just talking about. Um, but it also talks about how in some cases, not that one, um, 
the, the calculator problem. Like what is really the point if the point isn't something slightly alternative? Um, like maybe you should get them to to do things that are more alike what they would do with this output because output is not always going to be perfect mm -hmm. or it might not always be what you're looking for. Yeah. So you need to learn refinement and you need to learn like... Um, yeah, you could just different. grade harder. Yeah. Like that's another thing too. Like if if the assignment is a book report on um, the adventures of Tom Sawyer or something like that, you could basically tell them, look, you can use any tool you want, including an AI generator, uh, but know this, if you get a plot point detail wrong or you have a spelling error, you immediately lose 50% of your grade because I'll be able to tell you didn't read it. So you need to know the subject matter cold in order to tell if the AI output is actually accurate. I like this one. Um, someone said have, have more in-class debate. That's an interesting one. There's yeah. maybe some problems with that. I don't know. Yeah, not everybody participates in class hard. and yeah. like uh, oral participation is um, sometimes it encourages the wrong people yeah. to participate too much and doesn't allow um, some of the more thoughtful people, especially if we're talking like high school, some of the more thoughtful people to really share what they're thinking. Um, there's no perfect solution. So what you really need is uh, is a balance of different approaches. I, I think really the most important thing, and I've been surprised at how many don't. I've also been, okay, yeah, I've got a couple things to go over. Um, I, I think it's very important that teachers are aware of its existence and that they yes. don't necessarily continue following the exact status quo that they have been for a while yeah. because this is going to change the game. Something that I've been surprised about, people have been throwing around usage statistics. It got to... 1 million users in five days. Wow. Which is pretty crazy. And they've been comparing that to other meteoric rises of other things like Instagram and Facebook and yada yada. Sure. I'm actually surprised it's not more. Really? Maybe the speed, like five days to get to 1 million. Okay, sure. I'm just surprised the number that it got to wasn't actually higher because I'm stunned that like every student that on has Earth. heard of this is not immediately using it. Yeah, yeah, because the window for Abusing using it, it. To, yeah, <laughs> is very narrow. Yeah, the education system is going to respond. They like have to, um, and it's still online now. It is now bookmarked and always open on my computer at all points in time, because I have started. Because using that's it. how he's always been doing his work anyway by cheating. So he might as well cheat more efficiently. <laughs> I mean, if I could, why not? Yeah. Um, but like, it, uh, I've never not, done a real day's work in school. my life. Uh, if you can take shortcuts that are good, that like the, one of my one of my best friends growing up um, used to. This is not how he said it, but he effectively said like being lazy is a virtue. Yeah. Because and he's a back end developer now. It makes sense um, because he will find ways. To like not have to do this repetitive task or whatever. It doesn't mean he's For worse sure. at it, but he's going to be creative and inventive to make it so that that thing is better or is now automated or whatever else. Sure. Um, and like, yeah, you should use the tools you have. Um, but I use it in place of Google search sometimes now. Yeah. I'm careful. You got to validate. You have to validate. Yep. Um, but like... Yeah, there's, there's fairly simple things that I'll Google to try to get an answer for. And I'm like, okay. I got three ads. I got some clearly clickbaity websites that are just throwing like, like something that I hate doing is searching for reviews of like anything that isn't uh, a section that has large creators behind it mm -hmm. because you're just going to get all these websites that are just like Amazon click farm websites right. that just try to give you like, oh, this is the top 10 uh, CBD oil, whatever, whatever. Matter, snowboarding yeah. goggles, like scuba, whatever, like anything that you're looking for. It'll just be like, ah, and what are they actually? Well, probably the top 10 products on Amazon and every single one of them has an Amazon link because they just want you to use their affiliate so they can make money. That's all they actually want. It's not actually good. It's so annoying. Um, so with like those types of things, it's nicer to be able to just ask GPT and have it spit out an answer yeah. that is actually an answer right away. It might not be right and you need to verify um, and you need to make sure that it's not like complete crap, but it's usually, 
if you know that it will confidently lie, in my opinion, it's not that hard to notice when it is. Yeah. Um, but you have to be aware that it will do that. Um, yeah. Dan. Yeah. Sure. Uh, do you want to stay on the same vein or switch to something else? Yes. Okay, this one's from Brian. Stack Overflow has banned the use of chat GPT completely. Blanket ban. All of it. Uh, do you think this is the right move? Do you think we need some sort of AI detection for these kinds of systems? Uh, not gonna lie, I was reading. What do you think education system can do to counter the AI? Okay, no, the third one. The third one. Yeah, okay. the bottom one. There you go. Wait, the bottom one? There no. Stack Overflow has banned the use of chat GPT at all. Like I, so I heard about this. Um, do you think this is the right move? Do uh, you think we need some sort of? I don't think there's anything they can do about it. Yeah, how are they going to prove it? Yeah, the outputs from like that's the thing. Like, what's Chat the... GPT seem to be unique. It's like, like I... it's like banning being gay. <laughs> Like you, people are gonna do it anyways. Yeah, it 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 just is, and so, um, all you're all you're doing is forcing something underground, which is not beneficial to anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, I don't know, I don't really get the ah. There's a lot of controversy around this because people think it's gonna take their jobs. Um. I don't necessarily think so. And banning it ain't going to change that. Uh, that too. I am pretty strongly of the opinion, and I've talked about this offline. I don't think I talked about this on the show much. Um, and I felt this much more strongly after watching Theo's video on this. Um, am I going to be able to... Yeah, so Theo, the, the CEO of, of Ping.gg, we use um them for our remote calls so like when i was in france and serbia and we had to do wan show we used ping.gg we've used them for remote calls for a while um, he makes youtube videos as well and he has a pretty good video on using it for development now he's much more of an advanced developer so he was not as interested in using it all the time mm -hmm. because i think the best use case for it right now is for people that aren't um, so he's more interested in things like, uh, co-pilot and whatnot, cause he's actually sure. going to get in there and write stuff originally. Um, but he got it to do some impressive things. He also got it to fail, which is, I think what pretty much everyone has done who's been using it. But yeah, after watching his video, I felt this even more strongly. I think companies that do layoffs say, say, uh, GBT four comes out. And the new chatbot is like crazy. If yeah. I, if I, these are numbers are going to be wrong. If I remember correctly, oh man, what was it? GPT three is on like 300 million or 3 billion functions that it was trained on or something. That's probably wrong. And GPT four is going to be like, what's it like four times as, or five times as much? Like GPT-4 is going to be a big jump, theoretically. You have some diminishing returns and whatnot, but it's going to be a big jump. GPT-4 will be over 500 times larger than GPT-3. That means that it would have roughly the same number of parameters or connections as there are synapses in the human brain. Yeah. So you think GPT-3 with a chatbot is pretty cool? GPT-4 is coming, baby. Uh, it's going to be nuts. So like this is this is happening. Um, and it's going to get a lot better. Does it have flaws right now? Yes. One of the big ones that I've talked about is the rate limiting stuff. Yeah. That's a thing. If it could just write and write and write and write and write, it would be significantly stronger. One of the biggest yeah. problems that I'm having, uh, my normie friends run into right now is they try to write it, get it to write some code for them. Uh, and it doesn't work. And I, they ask me why it doesn't work and they send it to me and I'm like, oh, cause yeah, I mean, it stopped writing part way through. It's truncated. This code doesn't end. Um, so, but it's, it's it's coming and i think the companies that do mass layoffs because whatever version maybe like gpt7 becomes good enough that you can replace certain levels of uh developers with it the companies that do layoffs because of that are going They're to be, be the ones that fail yes. long term and the companies that go wow the developers that we have on staff right now are so much more just betterer 
that we are producing at a higher rate, that we are more competitive, that we are this, that we are that, our, our, our code base is more stable because people are able to spend more time working on maintenance tasks, all these different things. The companies that see that and either they don't fire, they either stay at their current staff levels or they hire more because their company is more effective at doing the thing that it tries to do are going to be the companies that succeed. I feel quite strongly about this. Um, I think you're going to see companies take short-term gains in the way of, of laying off people to lower their, their salary count that they have to pay um, compared to their income. And then you're going to see other companies that don't take those short-term gains. They keep working at the level that they have been and they just start massively outperforming this other company that laid people off. And this company that laid people off is going to go bye-bye and the company that didn't is going to notably succeed i think and deeply hope that that's what's going to happen with that said there's some, been some pretty good discussion in the float plane chat about why stack overflow might have banned it and there's two good reasons one is as a as a cover your ass move so that if someone does something catastrophically wrong based on an answer they got uh, in the forum uh they can point at it and say well that was like an ai generated thing which is totally banned on our site uh we'll remove it sorry about that um, number two is because it's spitting out a lot of wrong answers and they don't want to pollute the uh, there is, there the, is a lot of wrong answers. the validity of the information on their site with these GPT outputs. Um, so they're hoping that by banning it, they will get fewer GPT uh, chat GPT outputs um, that will lead people down the wrong path, uh, maintaining the, the 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 brand perception of their site. So I think those are pretty valid reasons. Um, they should find a way to get chat GPT to pay them for probably learning off of their website. Uh, but as it's completely open, I don't know if that's really a realistic thing. Um, yeah, I mean that, that makes sense. It, it does do a lot of, I, I've, I've said it every time and I try to say it very often <laughs> just in case people haven't used it before and they start using it. It is confidently wrong often. Um, you can, you can help that a little bit by refining your inputs and whatnot. Um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a, a meme someone put out, which was like, uh, before GPT chat, whatever, um, I spend, what was it like six hours writing code and I spend six hours debugging code. Yeah. It's like after GPT three, I spend, I think it's like 35 seconds writing code and I spend 24 hours debugging code. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, there are, there are those types of problems with it. Um, so uh, I don't, it's definitely not perfect. It's just it's just quite incredible to, to have in the the tool set. Yeah, I think I was telling uh, Kalanan about that today. The thirty seconds to write code. Um, this one's from Noah though. Hey Linus and Luke, what are your thoughts on using large language models in game development? <laughs> it's just all AI today. I feel <laughs> I was like gonna say, they, that's what GPT is. <laughs> I feel uh, like even though they can't have their own opinions, they can be perceived uh, like they do. Yeah. Um kind of cool. Like if you just walked up been. if you just like walked up to an NPC like a random NPC oh! and could have like a long conversation with them, I feel like it could be really good for immersiveness but really bad for gameplay. Like it it's really cool. If, again, if you want to go down a rabbit hole, I've recommended one rabbit hole already this show, but this one's really cool. Um look into the ways that game developers will try to guide the player through the level, through the experience, uh, be it through um, lighting or, um, or, or through you know, studying uh, player decision-making and, and creating mazes that are hard, but you can totally get through them. It's there's also, incredible. There's... And so muddying up the important data that the user may gather from from non-player characters with genuinely engaging conversations could be a big problem <laughs> there's also down that same line uh in the in the same way that people who design malls and you see a ton of this in vegas there's lots of uh, like neurological stuff with how you perceive light reflections and different colors of things and whatnot. So different malls and whatnot will be designed in a way that they use certain materials on the floors in the hallways and different materials on the floors in the shops 
uh, to to guide you in different directions and yeah. to, to make it difficult to leave. That's a yeah. big one. Um, it turns out that you're just a monkey and someone is playing you. There's lots of ways to yeah. influence you. A and smarter monkey to do it is all doing the it. Time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's people with doctorate. There's lots of people with doctorates whose whole job is to keep you using certain apps and services. Yeah. Um, that is totally a thing. They're going to get you. Um, okay. But yeah, I like that idea. So I, I think Dan even mentioned this in the chat, but ha- feed, like one, one of the problems that I would see with that is prompts, but you could feed it prompts based on your, your actions in the game or like your details about your character, stats about your character, all this different types of stuff yep. that could take a in-game conversation to an interesting different level, especially because you can get large language models to speak in certain ways. Like you can get it to speak like a pirate. So like that wouldn't even be, it's probably, uh, that's pretty cool. A couple of people have brought up how useful it is for Dwarf Fortress because it generates so much text but isn't written very naturally and ChatGPT can like fix it right up, which is pretty cool. That is cool. All right, what's next? Okay, I got a super important one here for Luke. Uh, hmm. What's an in- ideal sandwich for you? Your ideal sandwich. All right, thank you, producer. Um, <laughs> I think probably two RTX 6000s. I got so many comments about that. Um, and I knew I would the second, so uh, I say RTX 6000 in the, uh, the shadow video and the amount of people that were like, dang, RTX 6000 doesn't exist, idiot. And I'm like, (sighs) I linked a bunch of people to the page and then eventually I was just like, I'm not going to respond to these anymore because there were so many of them, um, on float plane. Why didn't NVIDIA just keep? The Quadro branding. Yeah, it would have been a lot better. It would have been like, way better. So that anyone actually knows what the heck you're talking about. So RTX 6000 is a dumb name. Um, I was I was happy on Floatplane, the ever better comment area, um, that there was only like one person that said it and people responded being like, here's the link, this is what it is. He didn't actually just make that up, blah, 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 blah. On YouTube, there was none of that. Um, Go YouTube. But yeah, I'm assuming the sandwiches question is coming from me calling them GPU sandwiches in that in that video. They might just want to know what kind of sandwiches you like. Also that. I don't know. I like lots of sandwiches. I'm boring. You a tuna guy? Tuna's okay. What about like a, like a turkey sandwich? Get that mayo, turkey, turkey, turkey are good. get some of that salt and pepper on there. Yep. All right. Um, like chicken grilled cheese sandwich. sandwich. I like black forest ham sandwiches. Okay. All right. Grilled so, cheese sandwiches okay, all right. Are so you'll eat anything that moves. Yeah. Okay. Fair sandwiches enough. are good. All right. Fine. Yeah. A lot of sandwiches don't move. Sandwiches are beautiful. Sandwiches are fine. <laughs> I like sandwiches. I eat them all the time. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I thought that was a real question about sandwiches. I didn't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> This is from uh, Kalan. Uh, do you have any tattoos? Any notable tattoos around the company? There are notable tattoos around the company. Yeah, I don't have any though. Me neither. Yeah. You're going to often find that we're rather poor. Yeah, super. It's like, <laughs> I like vanilla. Yeah, yeah. I actually, do, actually, maybe not too much vanilla. It's just, just a reasonable <laughs> amount of vanilla. Yeah. Please. <laughs> okay. And last one here is from Ethan. How long do you think it will take for Intel Arc to be competitive in the creative slash professional market? Blender already supports it, but it's my understanding that it kind of sucks. The, the a long time. <laughs> oh, go ahead. If you have specific <laughs> AV1 rendering tasks that are stable, mm. it seems to be quite good. Um, yeah, I think they might mean like uh, like SolidWorks and stuff, though. Yeah, I haven't done any of that. Yeah, stuff. they don't even have a professional line of GPUs yet. So let's uh, let's not put the let's cart before them, the horse. Give here. them a second on that one. Yeah, they're focused on data center and gaming, and there's a whole lot of in between that I think they can fill in later. Um, Bill S asks if Nintendo wanted to collaborate on LTX Expo, would you accept them as a sponsor? Uh, I think we would disclose to them that we're not that happy with a lot of the things that they do. Um, they have not been all that interested in working. With yeah, us. yeah. I mean, I, I think probably because we've been quite open about this for a very long time. Yeah, I think that one's a non-issue. And finally, Eric E asks, "Big fan of the show and the channel. One of my hobbies outside of tech is cooking. What are your favorite pieces of tech that you use in the kitchen?" I love my microwave. You still haven't used it, have you? Technically, tech. I used the Jewel once. Did you? Actually, it was a few weeks ago. How was it? Fine. Yeah. Um, I didn't leave it in. I'd used it for steaks. 
and I didn't leave it in the like long time. I left it in the minimum amount of time. And that was a huge mistake. Uh, uh, yeah, you don't do So that. they were pretty tough. Yeah. Um, they were cooked, it's somewhat, but they weren't good. Somewhat defeats like the whole purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was in a hurry to cook. And I was like, Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm I'm totally gonna try the jewel. Lol. That's one of its big downsides, is if you're in a hurry, you probably don't want to use yeah, it. Yeah, don't use it if you're hungry. Yeah. 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 You gotta like know that you're going to be eating a meal in a while. <laughs> and then be yeah. willing to go set it up yeah and then it's pretty good and it's not it's not going to make like the best steak you've ever had but it'll consistently do a really good job yeah and you still need to sear it you seared it yeah right okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah definitely and they're like definitely. gnarly if you don't do that. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> very unappetizing <laughs> um barrington the linus be like this water is too spicy <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh that's fair um, I think that's pretty much it for the show today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. It's a bad time and a bad channel.